Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 455 of the Unpaid and Underrated Podcast, the podcast where Keith has to turn up his headphones during my intro because I'm clearly talking like a weirdo. All right, this is the podcast for crew, by crew, mocked relentlessly by crew, and this tonight actually attended by a bunch of crew. So uh, welcome to all the, the looky loos tonight. Uh, at some point, we will have to kick you out, but... For the first little bit, I did invite all of you to join. I am joined by uh, Big Keith, who is drinking a beer without a koozie like a weirdo. Howdy. No comment on the koozie thing? It's not even a beer, is it? I said No, it's not a beer. Well, I if I stick it in Tanner's uh, 80s koozie, I can't get it back out, and then I don't know what I'm drinking, because I already <laughs> stuck it in the koozie, and then I was like, what the fuck's this called again? Because it's something brand new, and I spent me like the last 45 minutes trying to get it out of the koozie, so I can't put it back in until I tell you what it is. Yeah, you do need some straps in that thing. Um, also joined by uh, Big Hogan. How's it going? Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Glad Wunderbar. to have you, buddy. Wunderbar. And um, <sighs> Big Nate. <laughs> Our you, producer is here again. You can't get rid of me that easy. He's here to make me feel bad for all of my choices in all of my technical aspects. Absolutely. Uh, huge episode tonight. Got some big stuff coming, um, including an announcement, which is why I got everybody, I put it in the Discord, to join tonight, to to live view. Uh, they will be muted. They can come off camera, because I haven't figured that thing out yet. I guess I'm going to have to bother uh, Big Tawny. They can that. do what? They can do what? Well, they can come off camera if they want. It just won't matter. They're just going to be muted. Um But yeah, big announcement coming. Uh, let's dive right into this. Guys, what are you drinking? I've got a... I got, oh, what, what, go ahead, Hogan. What do you got, buddy? I got a uh, raspberry, cranberry, lacroix, lacroix. La <laughs> nice. Uh, this week I got a new one. Uh, I think it's Olipop by brand, Orange Squeeze. This thing was like fucking $4 or like $3 or something. It's one of those prebiotics. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, definitely different. Uh, I think it's better than the last prebiotic I had, though. So I don't know. I give it like a 3.5. On that hippie juice. He is on the hippie juice. That was such a funny segment last week. Nate, water? Uh, yeah, I've got water uh, supporting local businesses such as uh, Unpaid and Underrated with stickers and as well as a local favorite uh, walkie-talkie coffee shop, which the Zoom AI thing yeah. just keeps yeah. blending it's all a- of it out, so it doesn't matter. Um, and I also have a koozie, unlike Keith, but it's not, got, my, it's not holding now. my water. <laughs> But I have one. Uh, I've got some water in my Arnold Classic, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, this year, we no the 35th anniversary. I got this, got the pin and got the all the cool stuff. Uh, and I'm having a Keith's because fuck it, I have no problem. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? Who's wearing what? Well, Hogan's wearing a uh, pretty nice looking shirt. What do you got there, buddy? Yeah, in uh, honor of our. Uh, little sisters podcast last episode <laughs> i got a bar don't lie by mr basement brandon uh, not not one. too far there from the cellar keith yeah i got a I got a few of his shirts uh sitting in the closet right now i'm rocking out the uh the massonomics weight as a number heavy as a feeling t i even see one of his flags or flags behind you he does have yeah, a flag there yep I, I wasn't until the end of last week's episode that I realized that there was a pioneer flag in like my my video the entire episode and Chris had to just be staring at it going, you motherfucker. <laughs> ah, we stand by all of our partners. I added that question to my list of inappropriate things that Keith brings up in the podcast. <laughs> oh, I want that list in general. Send me that list if we don't get to it tonight so I can just put the it tr- on the Instagram. Oh, that could be like a bingo game. That would be yeah. a great bingo. <laughs> ah shoot i gotta spin up another bingo <laughs> i'm web sure app. i missed a couple i got a handful uh that was gonna I, i'm not doing this but it was going to be the uh uh, un- <laughs> uh unpaid underrated <laughs> was gonna be his his the, list of, make him take his own medicine on these questions <laughs> he puts people through uh, the labor free, unions the free square Wait, is he brings labor up his own unions. yes labor, labor unions. unions so bad i'll never talk about that <laughs> again <laughs> that one went over my own head of like, oh yeah, that is political. That's I love that goes. somebody somebody came in and left. Like, are we boring you? Like, what? Uh, I mean, <laughs> if someone probably just clicked on for a half a second and then they heard wait. me f 
Yeah. That's, that's typically what I do with the Massonomics recording when they're live. I go on for like three seconds and I just get off. And I'm like, why did I even? Yeah, I'm going to listen to this next week. I don't know. <laughs> why did do I? This. It's like, why did I go through the time to get on this thing? Yeah, you guys aren't makes... even. You guys aren't even in 1.25 right now. Like, I'm not listening to this. Uh, yeah. I've got uh, the Godzilla dun- deadlift dungeon uh, going, nice. uh, you know, in support of crew and uh, in support of, well, it's not in there, but um, I think I finally renamed my gym. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. We, what was uh, the winner? It was Dilf Dungeon, you know? <laughs> like, I was deadlifting and I had the Dilf shirt on. Uh... And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to give two kind of serious ones and one really stupid one. And I really should have expected the really stupid one would win. So are you going to be careful with that? Like, cause like, what is, what do you have a PC version of what to say it when you're a kid? Yeah. It's like, daddy, why do you have a banner that says Dilf in your basement? What does that we, mean? It's what we literally named our podcast this week. Dad, I'd like to follow. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I like, dang, I like frogs. No. Dang. I like frogs. Like damn, I like fucking deadlifting. <laughs> or uh, fall, just the what, the season of fall. Yeah, yeah I like fall. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or football. Yep. I can definitely, definitely uh, make that a little easier for him to understand. But uh, he should stay out of my gym. Um, I posted a video of me lifting a rock in my driveway the other day, and what we didn't see was in the second version of me trying to do that when I dropped the rock. I hadn't seen my little two-year-old come from across the yard and was less than three feet away from me when I dropped that rock. So now I'm absolutely terrified to lift rocks in my driveway. So we're going to have to take that into the basement and lock it up because, you know, (sighs) PTSD is a son of a bitch, isn't it? So we're definitely going to hide that rock and and lift only where the the locks are hidden. What, What you wearing over there, Nate? Yeah, so we got uh, this game we like to play. <laughs> ironically, uh, I am I'm wearing a Bar Does Lie shirt. Um, <laughs> created, it's made by your favorite brick and mortar store, Tango Charlie. They are brick and mortar. Um, no, no. Um, just kidding. No, what's their fucking name again? The brick and mortar store. We're not going to name them. Got the Metal Nomics. I got the Metal Nomics tea. I think the most yep. Sorry. The most controversial blank there is possibly. That thing's tiny. That thing's like a my. XL, if it's like a medium that I wore that once, and it's like, yeah, this is gonna never be seen again. Luckily, yeah. I've accidentally lost a ton of weight, and it fits really well now. There you go. I need. They must have got notes from that. Brandon. These, this run was. It's the smallest arm shirt I I have. It's Perfect. a large, and it fits like a small. Cut them off. Yeah. Like, how much do I have to pay Karen if I just send her like a pile of shirts? Just can you just cut these for me and send them back? Because Karen cut shirts are, you know, top tier. Hey, Karen, I've got a shipping container full of uh, <laughs> shirts on the way. If you could just cut those and just send them back, that'd be great. Thanks, yeah. Joey. Yeah. Uh, signed, Massonomics. Please invoice Tanner and Tommy at Massonomics LLC. <laughs> Payment, too. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, you guys want to get into rating last week's episode? It's yeah. nothing I want more in my life. Can I go first? No. How about it? All right. Um, what I did listen to, I phased completely out. Five out of five. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good. I I caught the uh, beginning of it live, I think, last week, driving back from a work trip. So that was nice to be able to have something to do for about the first hour or so, half 45 minutes. And then uh, I think I listened to it Sunday night. I must have fallen asleep to it, too, because I woke up to scans making memes about home gym con and like not getting it. And I was like, I could have swore I finished that episode. And I went back and I was like, oh yeah, I definitely like missed the last 45 minutes. And I was like, oh, okay, fuck you, Scans. But that's pretty funny. Uh, but all in all, you know, Brandon's always a good listen. They talked about basketball more than I think I've ever needed to hear basketball talked about. Uh, but, uh, you know, never a bad episode with uh, some bald guys on there. So five out of five, Mass Anonymous Gym iPod touches. They talked about two of your favorite things, home gym equipment and you. I can't believe you phased that out. <laughs> I think they did name. Well, I was waiting. You know, I, mean, I feel some... like Keith has been on the past like four episodes. <laughs> yeah. It, well, let me tell you, it hasn't helped my follower count. I think I've gotten like two new followers of like people that I was like that. That might have actually came from the podcast, and that was it. So, uh, get on the Massonomics podcast if you want to get two new followers. <laughs> we need an "I am inevitable" uh, meme, but it's just Keith. <laughs> We can get that word. The recurring up. segment. What is the Keith? Where's yeah. the Keith? 
good stuff. Uh, yeah, I got to listen to it. This is um, one of the first where I listened to the guest at one time speed. Uh, okay. I've been a two time speed man Jesus, in preparation dude. for this, this well, day. Uh, I've heard of and, that. And uh, I, I, I have a special ear for that. And so um, for that, I, I, of course, have to give it five iPod touches out of five. Good. Nate? Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the episode. Um, Basement Brandon is always a great hang. Uh, and he's just a, a real homie, really, honestly. I He was talking about how he answers all of his DMs. And I was like, you know yes. what? That's true. Because uh, I was working on a stupid video about strength plates, And I messaged him. And I was like, hey, can you give me a video of saying, you know, they're my plates and I want to go to them now? And homeboy like set up his legit camera like outside of his basement and did a video of him jumping out of like his basement window with a strength coat plate. And it was just like, awesome. you've gone above and beyond anything that I've needed. <laughs> like the, he's a, uh, I was like, I was like, this guy knows who has zero clue who I am. And I'm just going to like, Hey, I'm working on this video that you have no reason to believe is legit. Like, you know what I mean? And he's, yeah. he did it. So I mean, he's like, here's the file. Thanks. And I was just like, this is crazy. So for that reason, um, I'll give it the whole episode, even though none of that has to do with the episode, but I will give it five Massonomics gym iPod touches. Now yeah. that, that's almost as, was that almost as bad as when I uh, rated an episode from 10 years ago? And you gave me no, that credit? this is, I am rating the correct episode okay. based on criteria okay. outside of the episode itself, which is allowed. What you okay. did was heresy, a travesty and a sin against all of mankind. Well, at least I gave it a five out of five. So there, there's that. Yes, but yeah, sure, Keith. Whatever makes helps you sleep at night. In Nate's defense, uh, Brandon, I've been talking with him about pizza, and he says that if I <laughs> make the trip up, that he'll take me to his pizza spot that we both say we'll like, and he'll buy yes. me pizza. So he's bribing uh, crew. Dang, now no, you can't do that for his rating. Um, yeah, the homie, I'm allowing it, and so <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if you allow it, um, let's get to the thing everybody's been waiting for. Uh, what is this news about scans? Oh, we don't know. Oh, it, it was more just uh, by the time this is listening, everyone will know about it. I just thought if anyone looked at Instagram today, I think I reshared 17 like funny things about it. So uh, oh, yeah, they're already gone. But uh, yeah, they just kept coming in. I, th- I figured I'd get like one or two because it's like it's always hit or miss on when I put something on Instagram of what I actually get for feedback. But scans is, you know, a, a uh, what is it? The made made matriarch of the crew, if you will, patriarch, matriarch, whatever the fuck that is. Uh, so yeah, there. I think everyone knows Scans. So there was a lot of good, uh, funny, witty comments about him and how old he is. Basically, <laughs> I think they almost all were age related. Wait, Scans is old. I mean, <laughs> compared to some of us, but shocking. I think. I think shocking. honestly, I'm probably closer to Scans's age than we are. Like at least a third of the crew that are like in their early twenties, which is, you know, I think Joey and I are closer to Scans's age than we are Nate's age. Almost. <laughs> I'm the flat circle, baby. All right. Yeah. That was the scans, the anticlimactic no news. Wow. So, uh, to jump in here, everybody, uh, in the great words of Oprah, look under your chairs. I'm on a standing desk. What do I do? Under your, your feet. Yeah. Oh my stop. gosh, how this thing get under standing you? on stop it? Stop being a fucking nerd for a second and just go it look under your It came all the way from you're China on. and you're going <laughs> to... It was under my feet. I was wondering why it was so cushioned. I heard right. sounds Dude. I've never even began I, to pronounce. I also haven't label. seen this yet. 100%. It's been sitting under my desk. I don't have a knife. Yeah, I right. do not have a knife. What year is it? My knives aren't, I don't keep them in this place because children. I have three knives around me at all times. Ooh. All right. I found a backpack. I've got multiple knives Holy now. Holy shit. It's a bag. Or it's a bit the bag. Uh, gentlemen, life just got better. Is this a, what, an unpaid and underrated? This is an unpaid and underrated <laughs> windbreaker. It is. Oh, man. I got to get the, up. I got to take my head. On the back, it says the podcast by crew. Wow. Four crew, Hogan's got one himself. Nate, did you manage to get yours open? Oh, I got mine up. Oh, it's in a bag. Bag. It's in a bag. Big. Whoa! Look, mine looks like yours. <laughs> this is insane. 
Dude, this is literally insane. Zoom. I am so happy with how they turned out. I I I thought I was gonna get ripped off for where I found <laughs> this from. <laughs> no, these are crazy. I I'm gonna look like such a psychopath. You know, I look swaggy as heck. I almost wore it to work the other day uh, because it was the perfect temperature for it. Yep. And I was like, I just I don't know if I can get away with it. I can't wait to wear this around and look like like from body break. Like this is fantastic. The zipper is reverse. Yeah. Okay. I was about to ask. I was like, isn't that? Yeah. It's got a women's zipper. I don't know why, but it, it does. So get over it. But hey, it's got pockets, so. It's not full women's apparel. I didn't know it had pockets. I don't think it advertised that, so that was cool. Well, I got that going for you, which is nice. Listen to that zipper uh, voice. It's got good cuffs, too. So Zoom's <laughs> never going to let that sound through. <laughs> no, never. I got um, short-ass arms, and I always take long, long, long sleeves with short cut with, with loose cuffs, so this will actually, like, fit. Oh, uh, this is wonderful. It. Appreciate it, buddy. Dude, this I'm going to be so athletic in this. segment. That is the most financially invested someone I think has gone with their uh, crew gift. Um, the I just money want to know. I saved on shipping to Joey alone made it worth it. <laughs> Where, uh, where's the Keith head in this, though? That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't see any Keith head on this. There's no Keith head. Keep, keep um, so I understand that there's a little more to this. Hogan, I'd love it if you could announce what we brought everybody in for. Gotcha. So, challenge today, while we have some great crew members supporting us by being in here live, and everybody else will hear this um, when it comes out, that you can win one of these as well, and I will financially back this project. So, we're going to be introducing the first unpaid and underrated podcast challenge. To win this beautiful windbreaker, post an Instagram reel of yourself doing one of the drafts that we're going to pull in our game. I'll give more of the details at the draft, but essentially you're going to be using all four pieces of the home gym equipment that we list in our draft pick, one person. You can use any additional safety equipment as needed. Just stay safe. Don't get it hurt. Tag unpaid and underrated podcast. And use the hashtag, I believe we landed on Pelo. Pelo Talk. Pelo Talk. <laughs> Pelo Talk. Uh, there'll be a post with more details for spelling on that. <laughs> I know. I threw that out there. And I was like, ah, fuck you, Pelo and Pelo. Um, so use yeah. that hashtag. Use the description. Uh, in two weeks, winner will be announced, uh, selected by our uh, wonderful host here. So the the so- goal here is we're going to do a snake draft. I think we, yeah, I think you might have left that part out. We're going to do a snake draft of our favorite home gym equipment, which, as you all know, is my favorite topic. So I'm mm-hmm. going to take this 100% seriously. Um, and then all you got to do is, yeah, just film a video of you using... It doesn't have to be in one video. Don't be big mikey or or whatever that dude uh, yeah yeah no, that, please do actually that would be better no be safe hogan said listen what you do is what you do we cannot tell you what to do we are I thought we won the war res- we are not responsible for anything that you do with our snake draft your snake is your own snake you play with your own snake if you get bit by your snake that's on you your snake problems are not our snake problems we're just simply doing the draft you're doing videos Video at your own risk. But as Massonomics always says, keep it under a minute or if it's a slide, like have everything pretty quickly in yeah. the beginning. I don't want to watch five minutes of a video because you wouldn't edit the first couple, like 30 seconds out of each. List. So this is this will be released on Tuesday and we will be recording the same Tuesday this is released. Yeah. Right. So you have a week after that. You're all very lucky that I am off Monday and Tuesday every day week for the next month so i will take some time to go and go through all the videos and send keith and hogan my ratings and nate my ratings um and then they'll do the same uh but yeah you've offended as you're listening to this on the tuesday you have two weeks officially to either go and purchase the winner or your favorite and uh and record that with that said what 
Good. A rule. I'm assuming we have to be crew to submit. Like we can't. Can it be crew, can crew adjacent apply? I think it's got to be crew, pretty much. I assume. Yeah, yeah. We'll crew. pull in. We'll pull in Tanner to make sure your your membership's up to date. Uh, but with that said, to all of the crew listening, uh, we're going to start the draft now. I appreciate you guys showing up. Uh, I am going to kick you out unless you want to leave accordingly. Uh, but bye, 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 you bye, guys, please. you guys are aware now more than anybody else. Keep it to yourselves. Stop secret. And with that, I got my gift. I did not prepare a draft. I prepared nothing other than opening this gift, and I didn't even remember a knife. So for those reasons, I'm out. Later, buddy. I, I really got to oh, be careful not to report big, people. Big thank <laughs> you to Nate for the help with getting this put together. The <laughs> issues I went through to try to make this jacket on my own were nuts and he just gave me a file immediately and made it work so hogan hogan was was just slowly revealing what the gift was over the (laughs) course he was like uh could you tell me about the font you guys use um could you actually and it was just like slowly progressing he's like okay so basically here's exactly what i'm doing can you help me with this (laughs) it's just (laughs) like a slow progression yeah i I gave up i was anything like that in the future or ever once files we have a we have a apple folder we can just send you the link to well well, we can get you a high quality picture like pretty quickly if you ever need any of our logos. Yeah, we'd love to help you, but absolutely again. wild that I have a windbreaker with my podcast on it. I, I know, right? Yeah. I've got a yes. shirt now and a windbreaker. I can't wait to fart in this thing. I mean, can we just Bye, call it a, 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 <laughs> I, I think I'm going to call it an anti mosquito jacket for Tanner's backyard. <laughs> like, I don't think I'm going to pack it and bring it, but because I'm not, I don't really want to bring on more luggage. But oh man, that'd be good. But it's, it'd be a good crew fall jacket if I make it out to crew falls again. Yeah, I told Keith to keep some room in his bag for when he came to Hum Jim Con. He's got to be ready to rock a windbreaker. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's- all right, so we we kicked all the look leaves and the guests out. Appreciate the guys showing up, but uh, let's get our uh, guest on the horn to do an ad read, shall we? Do you have one for us? I sure do. All right, Hello, Big Hogan here. Attention. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed as a submaster's liver, shirt wearer, or been known to have unsafe drink storage, you may be entitled to becoming part of the Massonomics crew. Massonomics are a couple cool bean guys linked to talk about lifting. Exposure to Massonomics by podcast, Instagram, YouTube, the Arnold Bathrooms, or being an unsuspecting Aberdeen citizen in July may put you at risk of becoming a fellow silly goose. Please do not wait. Go to www.massonomics.com today to start your Just One More collection of parody gym clothing, drink spotters, or to secure your spot as a supporting member. But act fast because there are only three spots left. Become part of the crew and act now. Yep, well massonomics.com slash join. Get in there. Um, hopefully at the Arnold. Anybody, deck... anybody get the reference? <laughs> I might have missed it. You remember those mesothelioma ads? No. <laughs> this is a like a line by line ripoff of the you may have mesothelioma contact um, for compensation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see, I'm Canadian. I wouldn't have that. We don't I mean, we don't have those kinds of lawyers up here. Jokes are always better when we explain for the David, so I think that's a win-win for everybody. I, and we made him leave. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Week. I felt so funny, so I had to make sure everybody knows that I'm funny. No, oh, that's, oh. that's the point of this entire podcast. That is why we do this every week. Um, so let's uh, let's get our guest on the horn. Big Hogan, is that you? That is me. I'm here. You are live yeah. and unpaid and underrated. Um, oh, long time I, coming. I think so. I've been leading a lot of the chat going forward. Keith, I'd love for you to jump in and ask a couple, uh, a couple questions here. Yeah, buddy. Uh, uh, Hogan, you know, well, when we always kick it off with what brought you to Massonomics? When when did you find them? How did you find them? What's your backlog status? All that. That's a, so I was actually pulling through my messages uh, and I have a beautiful one from Keith after <laughs> Home Gym Con on April 27th which will be the anniversary of the strongman throwdown um he says to me are you in crew i say sorry the what <laughs> the, mass- 
<laughs> he says, yeah. Massonomics Discord crew. And I said, oh, I am not. He said, I'll take your confusing as a no. It's the supporting members they always talk about. Be in mind, I didn't know what the podcast was at this point. <laughs> he said, one of the handful of niche things I'm balls deep invested in. <laughs> uh, that's that's how I talk. <laughs> and so that that was my introduction from from there. I talk about uh you know having the home gym, really disconnected from a community, really enjoying the community aspect that was built at Home Gym Con, uh leaned into Massonomics, became a crew probably before I listened to a full episode. Um <laughs> wow. yes. Bought uh, into the like, crew before you bought into Massonomics. I was oh, more interested in the people than yep. the the podcast. And so I've probably spent more time on unpaid, underrated, and crew than their podcast. So I mean something Uh-oh. wrong with that. That's pretty good. I'm yeah. cool with that. Well, that was me selling everything at the Arnold too, right? Like that was me people coming up and they were like, you know, oh, what is Massonomics? What is this? What is that? And then they'd come over to me and I'm like Imagine 400 strong dummies making each other laugh every day in a discord. You could be a part of that. And that's when it was like, you know, I'll bring a laptop next year and I'll literally just turn it around and be like, yeah, put your credit card here. Sign in right now. Like, because you're right. The the crew makes Massonomics and they've said it before. They can't imagine things now without it. So that's, it's fucking, that was amazing to hear, man. Thank you. And I rem- I remember, I mean, I've looked at their merchandise for years. I mean, I remember seeing the, I mean, the 8-bit flag, the strawman flag. I, I saw that for years ago. Leg. And I was just like, eh, not yet. And eventually I got it, didn't know what they were. And uh, just two things coincided at a perfect time. Well, that's good. I'll, I'll, you know, add add that other, you know, add one more tally to my list of people that I have, uh, you know, got into the crew over the years. So that makes me happy. Yeah, my year anniversary is coming up, so I think they owe you thirty six dollars in kickback. <laughs> nice, 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 and then that'll, that'll get you on a uh, you know one step closer to that Hall of Fame. So, what what is your Hall of Fame status? I imagine it's somewhat low. Then, if you've only been here, what are you like five or less? Yeah, right on five. That's exactly yeah, so, it. Yeah, you got you got plenty of time to catch up to everybody else. Um, so, if anyone wanted to find you, Hogan, uh, where are they going to find you out on Insta- uh, Instagram, Discord, your username, all that stuff? Yeah, so find me on Instagram at Hogan underscore Jim. Um, I think on the Discord, I'm uh, Big Dr. Hogan or something like that. Um, yeah. I'm probably the only Hogan on there, so that's an easy way to find me. Makes sense. Uh, we'll everybody go give uh, Hogan a big follow on Instagram. He's always out there lifting something and uh, pretty uh, active in the stories of lifting stuff, so it's always fun to watch. Uh, where are you from, buddy? I think you've, you've been all over the place, but uh, where have you been? Where are you at now? Yeah, so I, I'm born from Athens, Ohio, but moved around. I spent most of my time kind of in eastern Kentucky area, so it was nice to hear the Appalachia from Chris uh, for last week. Uh, and so I, I really did like hearing that. It kind of felt like home because I'm back in Columbus, Ohio right now. And so the the very no accent talk has come in strong. Um, and so that's where I'm at right now. Were you at the Arnold this year? I was a last minute decision, like the week before, Mm -hmm. bought some tickets, just came right on in, did the rounds, whole thing. Okay. Honestly, embarrassing question. We met, right? We did not. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. I know. (laughs) I I, I knew you'd be there and it just became a timing thing. And like you said, uh, my phone worked, but I wasn't going to try to, I don't know, it just seemed weird to like hey, can I come say hi to you for four seconds? Because I had so many other people I wanted to meet. Of course. And I have a post of like, I was bouncing to get pictures and um, this one plate, I get signatures at conventions I go to. And so I was trying to get that full. So I was just crammed. Okay. Because I was like, it was one of those things where I was like, no, he was at the Arnold. And then I had to track and go, okay, hold on. Did I actually meet him? And then, like, I had to go through it, and I was looking at the pictures of you, I think, because you met Tanner and Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, so then was I there at that time? So I was trying to track that through. And in case you're wondering, that's how wild the fucking Arnold is. There is there We were there at the same time, for sure. But we just never crossed paths, despite me and you probably being in the same place at all times. 
So that's how wild it is. I still joke about Nate sending me a voicemail. Yeah. And I've just, I literally just texted, I'm not listening to that. I'm over at the Strength Co. booth. Like, don't, don't leave me voicemails. <laughs> Cracks me up. I should have well, kept I would, it. I would ask you what one piece of Masonomics merch you wish you had bought was, but you probably don't uh, have very good tabs on what their backlog of, uh, oh, you do have an answer. Okay, what do you got? I do. I do. And I'm, I am, I kick myself so hard. Because <laughs> again, I've been looking at these flags and their merch for, for years. I mean, I've had a home gym for a pretty long time. Um, and so decorating has been a thing of it. Uh, the Highlands 8-bit was a mm-hmm. flag at one point, And it, they have a spot right here for it. And man, I, I just, I didn't, I wasn't there. I guess I could give you the trifecta of all three of them there. but uh, I know. Yeah. It's such a good wall. And I, I kicking myself over it. What is that posh.com or something that like some lift shorts popped up on a couple of last year. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll come up there. I mean, there has I, been some, yep. some, there's been some crude trading, like people, uh, you know, some people have been trading some stuff and buying, selling some stuff that doesn't fit. So there's always, could always be worth throwing it up on a post and just ask. I have some 85 pound York round heads. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do a little barter. Oh yeah. So you were, uh, you, you ended up picking those up. Uh, I think they're I, uh, right below me here. Yeah. So have you guys, do you, is, is there a connection? Are they going to, are they going with someone from home gym con to make it out West or, or what's uh what's, what's the next trip? It, I, I, I can't remember the crew member who's, but they, I don't think they have discord uh, Tanner oh, yeah, message that they would be yeah. there. I don't know the handoff I'm bringing them. And if someone is convincing enough to vet their crew and they're no, going West, that's but... where they're going, <laughs> which I think is the spirit of it. It's like, <laughs> They will get there one day. As long as they're there before Arnold 25, it was faster. Um, <laughs> I'm almost, I'm almost prob- I think it's going to be a guy named George from what I've, uh, I think Tanner and uh, Kurt, Kurt sure. were talking about that. And then, so, cause I added, I added a George to the spreadsheet of who the, uh, who I was going to be at home gym con. Cause it looks like we're at 13 crew confirmed at home gym con this year. Sure. Uh, no, no, but that's a guy cool. named George. Yep, George. Look, George. If, George. If he e. doesn't have a tattoo, don't mm. don't give Ooh. it to him. Oh, that's a that's a that's a, that's a general topic uh, extension right here. Uh, who was it? It was uh, I can't remember who it was in the Discord. I think it was was it was it was it Moto or somebody else? But they toast they did a screenshot of Dan Bell doing like a double bicep, and you can yep. like kind kind of see the Masonomics M upside down on like his I don't know like his tri like the inner tricep bicep kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that was the picture he sent me. It was him doing double bicep. It's under there. Okay. So, yep, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so yeah. he did. He did make that go live. Uh, so we got a confirmation of that. Vis- vi- you know, the rest of the world got a visual confirmation of what we had broke a few months ago for everyone. Uh, what about your uh, profession, Hogan? And I know you're t- you're a doctor now. So, you know, are you uh, you like Big Jake out there doing all kinds of stuff with catheters, or are you a little doing doing something a little different? What? Hey, no, the real question, because like he's you're a psychologist. We're not going to there's no brain catheter. Is there a brain catheter? Uh, you could do some like electrical stimulus. I don't think I'd call that a catheter. You're not. Well, like a lobotomies, stimulus, are, lobotomies are pretty much banned now, right? Like we're not. Doing yeah, those for I, I sh- yeah, that I mean, the electroshock therapy, you know, that one's still kosher. Uh, but not, OK, not, not, not lobotomy. So the real question is. Is it Dr. Big or Big Doctor? Gotcha. So I agree with Big Dr. Jake. I much prefer Big Hogan Psy D, like your your letters. For, so for when you're when your doctor, your letters are kind of more what you care about. The problem being, uh, like an, uh, the people who are DOs might rec- uh, feel me on this. When you have obscure letters that are still a doctor, it 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 just doesn't ra- doesn't sound right. Um, so I follow suit, big Dr. Hogan. I think even, uh, I'm, I did a video with Kurt Locker. Um, and I think that's how he introduced me to. So I think the name has chosen me. I haven't chosen. Them. <laughs> so that's something you just, uh, you went to school for several years and just started practicing in the last year then. Yeah. So I finished my, uh, pre-doctoral internship at Louisville last year. And that was around when I went to home gym con, met Keith and everybody, there um and then finished in august of 23 and now i am uh got my doctorate and working on my postdoctoral hours 
and then licensure exam and all that fun stuff. But I practice right now. I, I work at a VA. And so I'm doing all the doctor stuff there. Hey, I know what that means this time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Better and, uh, you know, affairs, I believe. Uh, so have you, so have you been helping out any, uh, any, anyone from Tango Charlie since they are, you know, better and better and founded or, 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 you know, it does sound like they need help. They're really confused <laughs> or they're having dissociative states or they're, you know, the memory gaps, you know, they, they, they need to talk to somebody for sure. How is your, uh, how have your pets handled all the moving around? I uh, met your bearded dragon last year. Uh, you can plug his uh, Instagram if you want, if that, I think he's got more followers than, uh, Big, big, big moto does. Yeah, uh, that's uh, lifting lizard. I think. I, so Nicole, my partner, she runs that account. That's not a me thing. That's a her thing. Um, it's her class pet. Uh, he's right now. He's over here next to me. Um, so we have a lizard, a bearded dragon, uh, two cats, a dog, and a spider. Is our little zoo we have? Oh, wow. Yeah, you had, you had you guys were walking around with the with the bearded dragon like just on a leash, I think, or on your arm, pretty much the whole time last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just holds on. He's a good uh, attention grabber, and <laughs> it was a small enough thing where it became a good icebreaker uh, there. So, nice. are you uh, are you bringing him back to home, Jim Con, or is he staying at home this time? That's the plan. He should be coming, Nicole, and I have a whole gang of people who are coming to watch me do the throwdown, and oh, nice. so they'll take turns, kind of taking care of him. He's pretty low maintenance. He can just go in his little carrier as well. So he'll be chill. Nice. Yeah. I saw you guys, you've been training pretty hard for that. So that should be a good time. I, I thought about throwing my name in the hat, but I was just like, uh, I kind of didn't really want to spend the whole weekend there, spend like a thousand plus dollars to get there. And then like spend three quarters of a day competing and then like being exhausted the next day. I just wasn't really up for that. Uh, and then I tweaked the shit on my back a couple of days ago. So definitely not doing anything like that. But no, you've been you've been smashing it. So uh, you excited? Uh, you think you're going to hit? Ever? You think you're going to hit at least the opening weight on everything? Because I know some of that that was kind of like intimidating. Some of those numbers of like, oh, can I rep out two hundred? And like maybe for a single, I don't know. So I will say the opening event, the medley, that is right on the cusp for me. Uh, you're, you're right. The those are pretty big numbers, and in, in my opinion, uh, I I've been talking with the carp about it, and we're both like. W- we can do it. Can we do it all at once when it comes game time? I, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's kind of exciting because, you know, all the pieces align. It, it could happen. I Again, like I said, I, I worked out with Kurt and I got my hands on the implements. Like, you know, not that's a pretty leg up. I, in, inside oh, of training, sure. right? I got to touch what will be there. And the dumbbell was the, the – that's going to be amazing to see people press. That thing is incredibly hard. It's a – MB Power Center big top. So think old time globe style strongman dumbbell. And that is so much different than like your standard circus dumbbell. It it's a beast. No, it should be fun to watch. Uh definitely be cheering some people on. You know, I'll be I'm definitely be in and out, but probably not gonna sit there for six hours and watch strongman show, but I'll definitely, you know, cheer on some of the big lifts and have have a good time. But uh that's just, you know, if anyone uh, listen to this, I think you still have a couple of days to get, get your tickets and get your ass to French Lake, Indiana. Use code unpaid to save a couple bucks on your tickets and uh, come meet a dozen of us at home gym con. Head on down to French Lickin'. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you've uh, you, you've had to rebuild the home gym, what, five or six times now then with all your moves? Like, is that, is that, is that, I'm assuming that have you done whatever a lot of other people do is take that opportunity to just sell off everything that you don't like, I'm not moving this to then maybe sell it next year. Like I'm selling all this shit six months before I move. And then I'm moving the bare minimum. Absolutely not. I am a stubborn, I have <laughs> scrounged this thing together. The deals I have made through Facebook, I have highway robbery people through what I have in this place. Uh, uh, I I couldn't. Uh, fi- I, it's like a, I couldn't financially cover if I did sell it. It would be it'd be terrible. So no, I have invested a lot of work and moving effort every time we go. Um, uh, I know one kind of sketchy thing that happened. We we moved from Lexington to Louisville, and it's a pretty close drive. That's like an hour, hour and a half. And uh, the car I had at the time, it's kind of like pulling a little bit, and just being stubborn and dumb. I just kept going on it. And after we got done with the move, I looked at the tire and the the wires or whatever in it were showing. And I go, Oh shoot. 
<laughs> I should have thought about this. <laughs> um, my my mid twenty year old brain kicked in, and I did not act responsibly. And I probably had thousands of pounds of metal in there with me. So uh, we, we we skirted that. The move up to Columbus, we got a giant U haul, like the big twenty footer, loaded that thing up, filled it to weight capacity. Had to do other loads of vehicles. Um, so we've had to do the math on how much this thing weighs. <laughs> A good bit, I'd imagine. Okay, so, so have... no, 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 no. I, I, I have a question. I have a question. Mm-hmm. It's not even a question. Um, so you did musical theater, and I would just love to know, um, what um musical would be the story of you moving your gym? <laughs> oh man, is it Les Mis? It's always Les Mis, isn't it? <laughs> If I'm Hugh Jackman, it can be Les Mis. Any anything with Huey. Oh yeah, that was that was uh, who who said that this week? Was it? Oh, it was Tron said you were uh, looked like Wolverine and your oh, in, in, in was, your deadlift video. Or... That was a good Discord plug. That was a good Discord plug. Very nice. Uh, I, you know that's the funny thing. I did the musical because it's a uh, fun attention on me kind of thing that egotistical I'm gonna act and be silly i am not into musicals i just love doing them same uh, so same way well, yeah, yeah definitely in high school was not into i still hate musicals to this day except for like there's maybe two so repo the genetic opera was really fun because it was so different um and the muppets i mean the muppets do the muppets count as musicals a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, then I guess sure I like thing. musicals. Yeah, I guess I like some some musicals. Technically, every Disney m- movie is basically a musical. So. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, like the cartoons. So, like, we can't. We can't really like. What are, what are Muppets? Pu- just puppets? Are they Muppets? <laughs> they are Muppets. They exist in their own <laughs> realm of fabric creations. We are boring, Keith. Right now. Oh, you're good. <laughs> I no, we, we need to. There's plenty of equipment to come. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to do a follow up on your job, though. I uh, didn't catch it at first glance. It said uh, the, the, the dual certification cert, cert, yeah, as a sports psychologist. What is a sports psychologist? Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm a clinical psychologist. We have a handful of different psychologists. A clinical psychologist, someone is who, it's probably what you think of the chair and all that kind of jazz, the talk therapy, that thing. Sports psychology, you have to be a psychologist first, and then you can get a certification to work with people on performance efforts. So it's not mental health related. It's performance and sport related. So mm-hmm. it's different types of techniques or measures that you can do to optimize your mental functioning on the field or on the court or on the bar. Um, and it. so I find that to be really fascinating. There's some good studies out there that I like to just read for fun. And so... Um, when I get fin- finished my licensure, you know, I already have some connections on getting some more education and a more school uh, so I can get a certification. So you basically help people get strong and stay strong. And use their strength. There you go. I like and, that. And use their mind. Yes. Get use your mind to use your strength. Yeah. To contribute to their strength. I remember there was uh, one guy in Massanomic. God damn if I can remember their name because that's what I do. Uh, but they were talking about putting like like blankets over the weights so you didn't see how much you were lifting because you could like psych yourself out so like your coach would be like we know what you can do but you don't know what you can do so we're gonna hide it and you can pull it off and god if i can remember who that was it was the white rhino i just can't think of his name the big like thousand eleven hundred pound squatter yeah and they oh what the fuck is his name but that's definitely a thing that i've always thought about because sometimes like i'm looking at a a small squat and going, oh, I don't know if I could do that. And then I just do it like it's nothing because my eyes are closed. So I guess that would count as sports psychology. That, I mean, that would be a method that would help. And then where like my job would come into play within that is does that effectively work for you? Mm-hmm. If not, how do we adapt it to make it helpful for you? So it's less about getting you to fit to the technique, more of getting the techniques to fit to you. So like that example, I've read a paper on that where it's this disconnection from what you do from what your coach instructs you. And it's a blind acceptance on you give up control to them and let them Mm -hmm. completely dictate how you act. And that could be a method that does that. But at the same end, if you have someone who's wired to where 
not knowing causes them so much anxiety that that confirmation hinders them from focusing on performance, well, then you've actually hindered them in that method. But some people would probably be really effective. I'm guessing based on what I've heard from Keith, that would be a hindrance to him. <laughs> uh, my coach did blindly put in my third squat because I wasn't really feeling it. And I told him like one of these two. And he went with the one that, I mean, I probably had like five more pounds in it, but like um, I was not feeling up for squats that day. Very good. Uh, to follow up, I believe the one Joey was talking about would be the vanilla gorilla Blaine Sumner. Cause I know he specifically mm. talked about his coach putting garbage bags on his plates. Uh, I'm like 97% sure that's who it was. Probably. Yeah. yeah. There could have been other people too. I mean, it's probably I don't, not an, I don't remember thing. names. I don't remember names or follow people. We all who? know this. And then, um, yeah. I, Cause I mean, I'm, kind of of the means where like I go into juggernaut and juggernaut's like, we think you're going to do this today. And then I'm like, nah, that's too heavy. And I will like sandbag my warm ups because I'm afraid. And then they're so easy. And then the next day I'm like, okay, I'll go with what the warm ups are. And then they're still fucking easy. But I mean, that's because again, I'm psyching myself out. Like that's too heavy. I can't do that. So that's, that's really fun stuff. So juggernaut does do that to you. If you just listen to juggernaut, Sponsor what are you doing for uh, coaching, Hogan? So right now, uh, I, I had a coach for about a year and some, and I switched for the strongman competition due to just a host of reasons. And I did the plan that um, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Andrew Honest, Heinous. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he put out a plan because he's one of the co-directors. Or yep. Yeah, brothers. it was like a 12-week free thing that came with your mm-hmm. meet sign up, right? Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was real cheap. And I was like, I'll just do that. It's made for the thing that he made. Um, and I've been following that as close as I can. Um, obviously, home gyms, you kind of have to adapt a little bit, but it's pretty comparable. And so that's been my current run. Uh, after this comp, I'm taking a little bit of a off season and I'm going to reevaluate what I want to do for coaching. I find coaching is imperative for me to be able to perform well or because even though it's a guide, I message him regularly about it. And so mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like getting a, a little bit of help from a coach every now. I always tell people that coaching for me is just the accountability. Like if I'm going to spend 60 bucks a month or more or less, whatever, if I'm spending some amount of money, I'm going to be more committed to my, you know, my three or four days of training a week. I'm, you know, not going to do something stupid. I'm going to try to stick to like 90% of what's actually on the calendar that day and just, you know, have some stupid fun every now and then. But like 90% of the time I'm going to do what the guy I'm paying tells me to do. Same thing with meets. Like if I didn't sign up for meets, I wouldn't like give a shit about training. So that's uh good to hear. I'm not the only one in that. Uh, what's your uh, athletic background? Did you do a little high school sports or anything? Yeah, so I mostly come from a background of endurance running. I did cross country for about 10 years. Uh, found that when I got to high school, you know, I was on the varsity team since I think seventh grade, but due to the fact that our teams just didn't have a lot of people, and I was bad at it. I really couldn't get any ground on the com- competition till we would get to long runs, like 10 plus miles. Um, so before that, I did terribly. I got into lifting uh, for just, you know, you're a young adult and you start getting into lifting and I really liked it. And our coach, uh, we had a weight room coach. He invited me to, they're not sanctioned meets. They're like local high school compete powerlifting meets. I don't even know what to call them really. They they do a meet and they have judges and whatnot. Just an un- unsanctioned yeah, meet. Just unsanctioned, like yeah. go lift for fun, see if you enjoy They get a bunch of schools together. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And so I did that for four years and did very well um, at my weight class. And so I just fell in love with it. And um, then I went to college and just continued powerlifting. Did a lot of more unsanctioned meets, mock meets uh, on the side at the university and a few other places. And then uh, other sports at the time in high school. I did track and field. And uh, I remember when I switched into lifting, Unless to running, I told the coach, I'm not going to run. I only want to pole vault. So I only pole vaulted, which if you uh, track, you do four events. So you train for four things typically at practice. If you do just pole vault, you have a real cushy practice. <laughs> it is great. So that was fun. Did you do any wrestling? Because I heard you did some wrestling. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I did wrestling as well, um, and that broke me. That <laughs> is a very demanding sport. Oh my goodness. Uh, I was a light guy. I remember the freshman year of high school, I weighed 89 pounds. Jesus. And uh, I would often get paired with, I mean, now, you know, still a light guy, but 130 pound guy because we didn't have anybody anywhere near my weight. And I would just get smashed. It was just rough. Well, I always say, you know, you train against, uh, you know, do anything against someone better than you and it'll help you get better. So that's uh, <laughs> basically living the embodiment of that if you were. 40 pounds lighter than the next dude. Yeah, would you graduate high school at? If you grad, if you started at 90 pounds, would you, would you graduate at ballpark? Uh, probably. So when I would compete the one 35, 36 somewhere, I can't remember the number, uh, but I naturally weighed about 145. Okay. So you 50 pounds in four years. That's not bad. That's. So was this about the time that you started eating dinner or meals in bed at 2 AM? <laughs> I didn't switch to that. I, I'm sure that's a Nicole one. Uh, I didn't switch to that till I think my senior year of college. It finally clicked on me. Eat big, get big. And I would say every two years since then, uh, two or three years, I will gain 20 more pounds. And so I stayed about 150, I gained 20, gained 20, lost a bit of that. And now I sit around 170, give or take. But Oh, we're Every close. Just, we're yeah. very close. Yeah, we should be. I mean, I, I hover between 168 to 172, depending on what's going on. Yeah, I'm between 162 and 166, 167, based on what's going on. But yeah, With the food thing. On. Uh, I With would everything going on. I would set alarms for you know the, the night to eat. I, I I heard the strong men say that, and I'm like, oh, you got to do that, and it worked. It worked really well. I, it was just I needed an extra meal in the day, another uh, 500, 600 calories, and I just couldn't get myself to do it during the normal hours. So I would set an alarm late because I was a night owl and just pow in a, pow down another meal right before bed. Scan says if you're looking to gain weight, peanut butter and jam sandwiches. That sounds good. Just do those all throughout the day, all day. Scans isn't usually wrong. So I'm assuming yeah, he's been uh, very helpful. He's been giving some tips on strongman. It's been nice to talk to him. He's a he's a hell of a resource. So you're in a little bigger place now. It's got to be a little easier to do some of your uh, some of your hobbies with the woodworking and leatherworking. I'm assuming that had to be a lot difficult, a lot more difficult in a small apartment. Any belts? Any belts you're going to be making? Or I, I give, think I'm going to give uh, big big Chris a run for his money of uh, the uh, crew belt maker. He he gave all those free tips, right? He's it was uh oh who else gave all their secret sauce to oh uh, was that on uh oh t- Tommy talked about when he they did a video with uh Strength Co and they they were talking about their secret sauce on how they mm. produce barbells. Anyway, oh, yeah, 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 I'm actually yeah that should be a good video when that comes out probably like yeah. a month from now when they toured the uh the that factory. But anyway, no, I, I've done some like dress belts. I've done a couple of those. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of time and effort. But, you know, the new place, it we have a little bit more of like a workshop area I can do some tooling with, with comp prep the past few months. I mean, all I do is comp prep. That's <laughs> all I have time. That's it. Yeah, I feel that. I, I can't do much of anything. Uh, so I've been, I've been taking a break from that stuff. But no, I've really enjoyed that. It was such a hands-on experience. So much of my life the past decade has been education. And so exercise with sports and doing things with my hands, like woodworking and leatherworking has been a great distraction. Uh, to follow up to uh, a, a belt comment last week, uh, big, uh, big, big Joey E reached into my DMs this week after listening to the podcast and said, that the leverage belt that we asked about that like landed flat was supposed to be lever belt, but it must have autocorrected or something. So that was a slight, you know, basically a uh, follow up on that because he reached my DMs about that. It made me chuckle. I was like, yeah, leverage. I was Googling leverage belt as Chris was like, couldn't know what the fuck we were talking about. And there was like, there was like literally a lever. It was like a, like a, a fabric I I don't know, like a non leather belt that just the way like the clasp is it's like we use leverage as the clasp but i was like is that what the fuck he's talking about and then yeah he said lever belt i was like yeah that would have been more <laughs> fine more helpful of an answer um 
So one thing that made me chuckle that your uh, partner had mentioned, she said, uh, you're also into burning wood, but then it's in parentheses, not arson. <laughs> oh, I love Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I do some like wood burning art. So you take like a soldering iron kind of thing with different attachments and you do little designs and whatnot. I've done a handful of things of that. Um, <laughs> I think that comes because I told her when I was little, I had this my parents, I don't know why, they gave me this magnifying glass, this like big detective style magnifying glass, but not like a toy where it's plastic, like a glass lens. And like catch quick, it on fire with that. Yeah. Quickly you learn as a preteen teenage boy that that means you can make ants explode, catch paper on fire in an instant. Uh so I had to quickly catch myself to maybe I need to dial that back before uh it bites me in the ass. Oh, uh, oh, here's a good one. So uh, <laughs> you've got some uh, some some stand up comedian uh, background. So what's uh, how much of that have you done? So I've uh, semi retired from that. Uh, the scene in Columbus is so significant and the crowd here is so different. I do not dare. Mm-hmm. But when I was in undergrad, we had a open mic near where we were. I went to a, a semi-small university, and so it was a more of a open, welcoming crowd. And uh, I, I I did some talent shows when I went to uh, cross-country camps in high school, and I would do stand-up for that and did okay. And so came up with some new material in undergrad and tried that. I really like it. It's kind of the same vibe as the musical theater thing. It's you know, make people laugh, make people have a good time. It's just, I love doing that, but it's a uh, kind of location dependent. I, it, it, you really would be getting roasted out here. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. That, I think that might be uh, behind me for at least a while. Gotcha. Uh, well, speaking of things you love, we got a very controversial thing. We're going to talk about briefly that you might have to get into a fight with the previous guest. Uh, unless I'm completely misremembering the topic, but uh didn't didn't Laura hate Van Gogh or was that another someone else? Uh, a different. So it says here that you love Van Gogh. Was I completely? No, fuck, I botched it. That was it was Bach. That's completely different. Van yep. Gogh was like an yep. artist, right? And Bach completely, is a musical person. Completely, yeah. Not even yeah. the same wheelhouse. Yeah, he hates Johann one. Sebastian Bach. Laura, Laura, not Laura. Laura. Yeah, yeah. There's a name there that I can't. Don't pronounce. hate on the redheads. Say we we have the redhead beard right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I butchered that one. That was so anyway, bad. who doesn't love Van Gogh? Is that like the abstract art person? Oh. Uh, semi-abstract. It's really like texturized and 3D. That's what I'm super into. We have a painting I did in our living room that's the paint like has shadow. Like the light will cast shadow on it because it comes off so far. And mm-hmm. that's just like, oh, it's so cool to me. And he does that better. He did that better than anybody. So Nice. All right. I, I Okay. It's it's time. It's time. So you like spicy stuff. So let's uh, chat. <laughs> let's chat. We'll give Keith a second here. Cause now, now, what is your favorite? Um, what's your favorite go to level of spicy? So I think if you're a human being, you need to build up your spice tolerance to habanero. That's yeah. you. That, that's where the flavor is the most enjoyable yep. and you get a high level of spice you get past that they get stupid they, they, they're and also they typically taste bad they've lost flavor in this pursuit for capsaicin so i disagree disagree ghost pepper is where where my my mid level is like when i'm so, like i want something really hot today i go to ghost when i want something i want to hurt i go to reaper I haven't tried pepper X yet, but I don't eat them raw like a fucking psycho, right? Like I just go and like find sauces that have them mixed in. Uh, Habanero is a very good scotch bonnet's a very like I think even your average human should stand scotch bonnet. Yeah, I would say again, my statement is not me. That's why I think the general is. Yeah, I, my I think I talked about this, uh, Joey. My my favorite salsa is Miss Renfro's mm-hmm. Ghost Pepper. Uh, salsa oh my gosh hits it perfectly such a great salsa now there's some comments here about when fast food companies label something spicy um my 
they're they need to stop. They need I to. What, I I've I don't know if I said it on the podcast or if I just said it in general. I do think we need like. I, I appreciate Scoville, but Scoville's hard to buy into. But there should be some regulation at some point on what we're allowed to call spicy, because I'll get some like triple X spicy shit. It's just Frank's. It's just Frank's. And then I'll get some, Oh, this is kind of hot. And it's like insane Reaper pepper chili stuff. Um, what's your worst experience going into a fast food place and saying, give me the hottest you got and being utterly disappointed. I can tell you mine within 30 seconds. I feel like it was when the Wendy Spicy Nugs came back, and I was so excited because I remember when I was little, I loved them. And I was like, oh, they're so spicy. It's because it's black pepper. That's what makes them spicy. <laughs> there's, a, there's like thick black pepper going on them. And I had that as an adult. I remember like I got in line. I was so ready for them, and it didn't live up to any of my hype <laughs> from my childhood memory of it. And I was so disappointed. I'm sure others have been more egregious calling something ghost pepper and it tastes Popeyes. like ketchup. It was Popeye's. Um, Popeye's ghost pepper wings. Yeah. I've been into those and it was just like, nah, nah, you're messing with me right now. There's not, they're ghost of a pepper. They're not ghost pepper. There's nothing here. I blame hot ones for their popularization of spicy foods. And then all the fast food places were like, Ooh, people love this. Let me get on that train, but they won't actually eat it if they get it. So we can't sell them that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give them what they call spicy, but we don't want them to return it. Right. So they'll call it ghost pepper, but yeah, it's like, it's like 10% ghost pepper. The seeds in, leave those seeds in there. Absolutely. I think my eyes are watering from all that. It's just, <laughs> like, I think the, the, the spicy chicken sandwich from Burger King is labeled accurately. <laughs> With wow. mayonnaise on it yep. to cool it for you. No, that was actually <laughs> really not the idea. No, that's the original. I don't, the spicy one, I think it's got a little kick to it. And Joey's, Joey always likes to talk the spicy food stuff, which is fair because I get all my gym talk stuff. So it is all good. You got a lot of stuff. You're, you're there's part of a the list. lot very of organized stuff. information, and it's like well done too. It's not. I, just I read like through it like run four, on paragraphs. I read through it like four times. Didn't memorize a single thing <laughs> except the Captain America speedo. Love to hear about how that came out. Well, I haven't seen that. Oh, th- this this is Lucas. I know this for sure. <laughs> I have no okay. clue. I have no clue who sent what. All the font looks the yeah. same to me. I can I I can already know. Oh, okay. I'll I'll, I'll tell that one. Um. In in high school, we go to you know rural eastern Kentucky. We go to uh, lakes and caves and whatnot. Anyway, there's this one river we go to, and everybody you know breaks out in their swimwear. And I, being again that funny, trying to make people laugh kind of guy, yeah. I'm like, you know, I'll get a speedo, and I go on Etsy or Amazon or I don't know what, and get something from China, which is this. Captain America. It's got like the shield on one of the cheeks and (laughs) it is inappropriately sized. And I was like, this is fine. This is fine. And I I pull off and everything. I'm in that. Um, And then I think at the time we were, you know, not really made a deal out of it, but then a dude comes by who he's in a tube. He's floating down the river. He's got two behind him with a 30 rack resting in it and kind of floating with him. And he was having none of it as he's boozing and cruising down the river. Mm-hmm. Mad at you because you For... have a speedo on. Um. All right, I'm going to do a Rushmore. Let's jump into a Rushmore because you know we're, we're Western Northeast South Dakota guys, so we have this game that we invented called uh, Mount Rushmore that um totally invented by us. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear your your Rushmore of bracket famous hogan's let's give you the four hogan's they don't have to be famous i just put that in there like but just like your four famous hogan's gotcha okay so and they're i I like being a hogan they're really not a lot of us it's 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 kind of fun yeah but so it's i'm be stretching to even get four um i'm named after the golfer ben hogan so with the masters just coming up um that's kind of 
uh, relevant, I guess. So he's definitely on there. You can't forget the Hulk. Uh, he he is who I get called all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, your parents name you after Hulk Hogan. And I'm like, you know, if I could grow that blonde hair and I could rock that style when I go bald, maybe I would. But uh, he'll he'll go on that list. Um, man, the show Hogan's Heroes. Uh, that's that's got to go on there. Um, I, I that's a bit of my joke I do with my veterans on uh, Hogan, like <laughs> Hogan's Heroes, and yeah, m- most people at the VA are fifty uh, some year old men, so they they get on that pretty well. Oh man. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to cheat. <laughs> Actually, that's, cheat anything. that's about who I would have done too, except for the golfer. I don't know the golfer. Oh man, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> you don't know Crocodile Dundee? Holy shit, Crocodile Dundee. I mean, I know what what's the reference within that? Well, his name's Maybe Hogan. His, his name is Paul Hogan. So it says the last is it, name. It's, we'll oh, say. okay. So that's it. Well, Hulk, I know, Hulk, yeah. Hulk Hogan's last name. Oh, it's, not, it's not even his real name. I know. It was a Terry. I actually don't know something. any famous or notable Hogan first names. I know none. I don't think I know a person with a Hogan first name. Um, yeah, I don't. Crocodile Dundee. There we go. Yeah, I'll, Paul I'll, Hogan. Pull an audible. I'll pull an audible. <laughs> it works. I dig it. All right. Uh, oof. Hmm. Well, I already pulled some of these unpaid and underrated out of here. So I think we should jump into unpaid or underrated. Because I think we got a game that we have to play that I really think is going to take longer than we expect it to take. Probably. Yeah. I, I, I it's kind of been what I've been dreading is like moving things along. And I don't like to do that. That's why it's like, Keith, ask some questions. But in my head, I'm just <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't want to do a two-hour game. I have to work in the morning. <laughs> I just want to hear I want to hear a 90-second story about uh, your your new truck and what happened to it. Oh, my gosh. Um, so get my first nice job, you know, able to afford a, a good vehicle. I get a brand-new Toyota Tacoma. Love it. Love it so much. Uh, I have it for two days. And I walk outside to go to work, first day of work, and our tree in our front yard, limb fell off, came down, smashed the driver's side handle. It's all it hit was just the handle, but absolutely obliterated it. Um, And I just, I'm so sad and angry because we've been trying to get our apartment complex to take care of that tree, and they didn't. Uh, And so I just go, Nicole, you need to come do all the pictures and whatnot. I can't, I can't even... And so she was sweet enough to do that for me, but that's the sad story of the truck. That sucks. Did you end up having to do a five hundred dollar deductible and just eat it, or did? Uh... Bas- yeah, basically that's what's that going to be. And I've been I've been in such a like state where I filed all the claims, I got it all done, uh, and I have the check for everything, and I have two years to follow through with it. I've been again twenty year old who's not on his stuff. I have pushed that off till <laughs> after the comp, and that is will be a a thing come may that i take care of nice all right yeah let's do uh let's do some unpaid and underrated do you want to uh try to top i think it was chris a couple weeks ago that explained the rules to the listeners do you want to explain the the rules or do you want of us to do it oh man i almost just wrote down what he said because you're right he did it better than anybody <laughs> had ever uh i'll give it a go sure screw it so we do, we'll do it this. live well, yeah <laughs> I don't know why when you said that, my brain and correct me if I'm wrong, it kept telling me Bill O'Reilly. It's yes. not Bill O'Reilly. It, it, oh, is. it is absolutely is. Okay. okay. Yeah, we just I don't know why. I, I I was like, I must be wrong because they don't know who he is and uh, what anyway. Yeah, when he when he absolutely snapped out. It was we'll do it live. And it becomes <laughs> it's from when I was a bartender. Right. And like you would like you'd be having like a slow night and uh, and then there's something like, oh, I uh, forgot to tell you, there's a bachelor party coming in and they'll be here with about 30 people in five minutes. I hope your dishes are cut up and you just go, well, fucking do it live. Like, what do you, what else are you going to do? Like, you just commit to doing what you're going to do right now. And I love that that's become a thing on this podcast uh, I think I remember the when I said it to Siri and watching her face, like she was in mid sentence and she stopped and was like, 
you're right. That's a thing. I'm going to like, she just clued in immediately. Yeah, definitely. It is Bill O'Reilly. It definitely is the, there's no words on it. I'll fucking write it myself. What does that mean? It comes from that video, but it is kind of like motivation. Like we'll do it live. What are you going to do? Not do it. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, I, I appreciate it. Yeah. So there's this little known game. I, I would say that it was created here, uh, known as, unpaid and underrated essentially meaning if it's unpaid meh if it's underrated cool that's the gist of it that's how i remember it so we're going to be giving me some uh, topics that are semi-related and i'll determine if it's unpaid eh, or underrated as in cool and from there i get my druthers of course and the druthers are the all. important part, yeah. That is the most important part. I thought of a game of a, you know, I'd debate on games it's called Just Your Druthers, um, where you could only ride the line. But <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> two I of your favorite things, of things ride the line, <laughs> loser. That you would be think. really funny. Just give you things that you want to be definitive on. And, but yeah, I was like, uh, I, I, I'm too of a gym guy. So Let's no, again, send those to me. Those will be really fun to fuck with people with. That's actually a fantastic idea. God, I wish I now kind of want to do that instead. <laughs> well, we'll we'll, we'll st- we're gonna you know stick to the program and not do it live today. So we'll go ahead and you know stick stick to what we had written down. So, Big Hogan, unpaid or underrated squat shoes, raised heels, basically. Gotcha. And so they are so popular. At least, I think, like, five years ago. I think the big shift has been back to barefoot or as low, low profile as possible. And so I would say now they are definitely underrated. And I I couldn't I couldn't lift without them. I, I, I mean, right now I'm, I'm kind of dealing with a tight hamstring. And I almost kind of like deadlifting in them because it gets that pressure mm. off of my heel. It's I don't do anything heavy with them on. Uh, but it just gets me in a nice, seated, comfortable position. I I do most of my lifts with a bond to be honest. Yeah, I I can agree with that. I I think I I don't know. I couldn't imagine not having them. I wish they made like an extra wide, like comfortable shoe. Like I love my Addy Powers, and I have a second pair that I bought off eBay that was like borderline brand new that I'll basically wear in ten years when these kind of start like you know showing some age and like maybe like if they ever wear out, like if you can. I mean, you have to be able to. I'm assuming I'm going to wear a squat shoe out at some point because I end up, you know, I squat and bench in it and just walk around the gym between sets and shit. So, yeah. 100% 100% agree with you on that. So, number two, Big Hogan, unpaid or underrated garage slope. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, I mean, un- unpaid, you know. <laughs> pe- like, you know. This can kind of be taken a lot of ways. So, uh, I'm a personal opinion of get over it. So, it's just, eh, who cares? It's it's so insignificant 90% of the time. If you have it that bad, you have a garage gym that's set up not for lifting. Uh, you just need to get over it. Turn. Fa- so I always face one way. So the slope is one way or the other. So that kind of dictates maybe how you set it up. But aside from that, I mean, put on some lifters. It'll correct for <laughs> it. Make it close enough. I don't really level my flooring or anything. Just that's too much. No, I know you, you you can't talk about your clients, but is that something you tell them a lot of the time? Is just get over it. Just get over like it. It's something it's something it's something you've uh, I've heard you say many a time in this episode. So you know it's uh, is that part of your uh, it, is that more of the at home Hogan talk? Not, it's not called immersion. Word. And when something is genuinely a problem, you just fucking do it. Just get over it. <laughs> well, you know I won't get too per, super clinical on the way I would spin that description in a clinical setting, but no, I do I I. I that is a get out of that office. You two different hats. I'm I'm very yeah, much yeah. two different people. All right. How many? Uh, yep. I got oh. one more. Don't be jumping in on me. Whoa, there. whoa, whoa. Okay. No, the first one you already crossed off. That's not, that wasn't mine. So uh, da, 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 just so the listeners can hear our bickering. <laughs> uh, Big Hogan, unpaid or underrated air fryers. Oh my. Unpaid. They were a fad a little bit, but I think they've died down. No, they're still the best thing. 
I anything that you like that's a treat that would have been in the oven that we, you would have made and always would have had the soggy bottom side that made it not as good as getting an appetizer from like a restaurant. Air fryer makes it that on issue. I love our air fryer. We have used it. I use it every day. I, I cook in it every day. It's just so great. Never used one. I don't want to give up any more counter space. My counters are literally overflowing with shit. I don't know what I would like trade it out with or I don't know. It is an oven. It, it, it really, it's just an oven. So yeah, if you're struggling for space, maybe not worth it, but it, uh, it's, I do I love, love convenience. It. Convenience is, is clutch, but I don't know. I need a bigger house. All right. And now it's Joey's turn. A bigger house for you just means bigger gym and you know it. Well, yeah, but I have a poorly laid out kitchen. Ah, God, that leads me to so much. You have the biggest gym of anybody I've met in our basement. And your kitchen's poorly laid out. I'm just, I'm lucky that I have a, I am lucky, I'm lucky that I have a ranch with an unfinished basement. Like, mm. I don't, I have a, I literally have like a 970 square foot house, but my basement is also 970 square foot and three quarters of it is a gym. So if it wasn't, if I had a split, if I had a two story house, I'd have a fucking like 400 square foot basement. I wouldn't have a gym basically. So I'm very lucky that I'm like the only ranch in like the whole block basically. So is there a bathroom in your, in your gym? No, well, yeah, if you piss in the sink, maybe, but no. All right. Not. So May 10th, it's going to look really fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, unpaid or underrated. Training outdoors. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I I think, Joe, you talked this. We had another crew member talk about their start in COVID with working out outside. I, I apologize. I can't remember Murph. her name. or Murph. Okay, a big Murph. Um, I started my... My new home gym. So I had a home gym when I was in high school. But then after that, I went to commercial during college. COVID came and I, I live in a small uh, two bedroom apartment, but one of the bedrooms was an office because I had to do clinical work in there. So I couldn't do a gym in there. Well, I could have, but I've had some explaining to do. So I Let's get see. a rack made by this fabricator in like Eastern Tennessee. And I tell him specifically, uh, make it to where it can be disassembled because I put together and took apart my whole gym setup every day throughout probably 2020. And then part of 2021, I had to carry all the stuff outside stall mat included. I cut it up into four pieces, would set it up. I would lift outside in our parking lot. And I did that. And that's how, when I spend all this money, I go, I paid my dues. I can get whatever I want. I proved to myself I will continue with this. Um, and so definitely all I had to say, unpaid. It was the most enjoyable time when I look back on it. It was so great just seeing blue sky or being in the rain and having to figure it out. Oh, it's so great. I think you meant to say underrated there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. I kind of missed that deadlifting outside. I kind of missed that, which is when my rock is still outside for now like i said earlier that might have to change but like yeah i definitely missed that lifting outside i it and i discovery deadlift didn't help that dude's stuff just makes me want to go lift in the woods all day every day such a it's such a great idea i i love the idea it's like this physical challenge of i have to take it with me yeah. into the site i there's something so mindful about that practice it it seems so therapeutic i would love to yeah, yeah, he's a uh, he's a good dude, and his stuff is fun to watch. All right, unpaid or underrated split level home? Oh gosh, un unpaid. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I can remember it that way. Yeah, we we currently live in a split level home. It's kind of cool that we have a garage, and I think this came up in the Discord at some point. On is it a basement or is it a garage? Uh, most of the walls are. Covered okay. by dirt or yeah. home. That's yeah, basement. so it's sub, except for the garage door. So and it with goes, a big walkout door. Yeah, and it's this giant slant to get out. It's a pain. Mm. Uh, That's got something in the winter. Oh, my, oh man, there's well, some videos I have. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, everything, there's no good layout. You end up not using one of the floors. It's just mm -hmm. you don't do anything in one of them. Um, you have everything in the other. So you have so much storage. It's kind of cool if you like storage space, but man, talk about having to pay for so much extra square footage and it not be livable space unpaid. All right. 
I think the last one is unpaid or underrated challenge coin. Oh man, the thing I'm most excited for on <laughs> uh, the uh, Hall, uh, of Fame. Hall of Fame, and it's going to be so long till I get anywhere near that. Same. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a year and a half out, I think, or a year out. Oh my gosh, uh, I have a little bit of a collection of challenge coins. I, I got. I, I was in some uh mental health related veteran organizations and they do challenge coins we do a challenge coin with our department um that i give to veterans and so i i've slowly been curing a collection and there's something to the ritual and the way that they're treated it, it's just super ceremonial and i i feel like there's a lot of things especially in like American culture that there's all a tradition, really. We kind of just make your own traditions. And that's something that's very a collective tradition that's, that's here. And I, I like that I've been invited to be a part of it. And the fact that Macedonics has some connection to where that originated from. I have a plaque in my office with where the challenge coin came from, the story behind it, and then my collection of it. And so here in, you know, five, 10 years when I finally spend enough money and make enough good friendship decisions, but poor financial decisions, Mm -hmm. I can finally get that, that other coin. Yeah. I'm excited for that for sure. Okay. That I think you passed unpaid and underrated. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, So definitely uh, last thing before we jump into your game, which, you know, everybody's just waiting is FMK. I think we have to do some FMK. So FMK energy drinks getting dressed up and I got last one here stupid people hmm. this one's a bit of a this one's layup. a bit of a mulligan for you yeah layup yeah this is a layup for you <laughs> okay <laughs> all right um you know I'm probably gonna go against what you might might guess I I really so my job is heavily about education, but mm-hmm. teaching. And so I'm going to marry stupid people. Um, I have a, I have a, I have a love for education. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to, uh, K getting dressed up. I like it. I could, I could leave it. I could leave it behind. I could leave it behind me. Um, mm-hmm. and then I got a, F energy drinks because oh my gosh it's like one one more just one more i'll take one more <laughs> i i heard yeah you and i share our love of ghost me you and hannah of ghost energy drinks they're just the best they're just the best uh, i had to get a monster the other day and i used to really like monster and i was just so sad i was just like it's not a ghost i'm wasting this on, on when it could be a ghost <laughs> was it the green monster no I I went a uh, day laborer and went white and uh, the best. Wow. Okay, so yeah, no white monster are the best if you have to have a monster. I got a ghost energy drinks are the best energy drinks in the market. The white one was so it was I, I so I like the green apple warheads from Ghost and it's so tart like it's so in your oh. face with. Tartan. I dislike that one so much. I love it. Their it's sour awesome. ones are so bad to me. Yeah. Yeah. The, I hear the, that. the strawberry lemonade or pink lemonade, whatever was amazing. They had one. Oh God, the bubble issues. Bring that back. Nobody from ghost is listening to this, but I will just harass them constantly. Bring back the bubble issues. And I haven't had the sour strips one yet, but I have the sour strips pump and uh, pre-workout. Uh, they just really know how to make flavors. And they put creatine in their fucking energy drinks. Like, what the hell's that about? You remember when, uh, uh, who, who's the other Bang. Bang got sued for, like, <laughs> millions of dollars because they false advertised said they did, and they really weren't. Yeah, they were putting, like, creata or something, like, something stupid that they made up. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right. I think you passed FMK. All right, we got a uh, game you want to host, and uh, you know, yeah, that, let everyone know what what you know. What this is going to take the longest. I got to get yeah. my notes open. Have, yeah, I got mine. I got my spreadsheet. <laughs> I need That's like a. 
I need a water, maybe a now we get to have to figure out we wanna uh, we need to do like a uh a disclaimer as far as like, well, that's close enough to this, or this covers all barbells, or this covers all plates. Like, is it to assume that you have callers? Or like, we have to we have to get some of the baseline questions out of the way, I guess, because there will be some. So uh, why don't we explain the game first? Yeah. Okay. That. So the game is a snake draft for favorite home gym equipment. Not if you can only have these pieces, what it would be. It's just whatever you like the most. Um, we will do a snake draft, meaning it's a random order. I pre-randomized it. We'll go Joey, Hogan, Keith. And so we'll go Joey, Hogan, Keith, then Keith, Hogan, Joey, and we'll do that. We're selecting four draft picks. So each of you should have picked 10 or so beforehand in case something gets picked. If it gets picked, you can't pick it again. Um, as far as the challenge, yeah, like things like collars or spotters or things like that, just assumed that you'll have those so you have safety and whatnot. Yeah. Um, basic stuff. And again, you all get to we'll select oh, no. for winners. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Like That's like seven. half of my shit. Um, um, but the but the cool part is, you know, if you're listening to this and you're and you want to play along, you actually get to because that's how you get to win one of these awesome windbreakers. And I'll make sure I get some pictures of this tomorrow. Um, is yeah, is whatever you think of us won, tag us, tag the podcast, use hashtag Palo Talk, Palo P E L L O W T A L K, you know, to keep it sexy. And uh, we can definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah, Hogan's going to hook you up with a windbreaker, which is wild, wild, man. I'm so I want to I want to make the go ahead. The the, the funny. The, so I don't I want to make it abundantly clear for the challenge because there's a bit of a, the twist that I think makes it humorous. Um, combine the four things into one exercise. So if you have a sandbag in your hands and you've got to find out how to also lift a barbell or whatever it might be, you combine them all into one thing. You make, you know, strong man to the extreme. You make it weird. Maybe it's a medley, whatever you got to do to fit all of them in to one exercise. That's the idea. Um, not like four lifts of each thing. You make them, I guess if you did a medley, okay. but because I was okay with the four lifts with the medley. But like I said earlier, don't hurt yourself. Don't, yeah. don't put a, a bar on your back full of 500 pounds and try and lift a sandbag or something like don't hurt yourself for this. This is, that would be stupid, but have fun. Um, no. All right. I'm first. Correct. Okay. You know, this is coming natural stones. Oh uh, yeah. Natural stones is going first. I got one. Might have another one coming. Love me some natural stones, me and Scants and, and Dodds. Uh, heads up, I'm probably heading to Dodds after the lift hard, leave easy to go lift his natural stones. Like, there you go. I might be called a power lifter, but I get the feeling 2025 is not going to be my power lifting era. So, natural stones is my first pick for the snake draft. Very, very good pick. Who's, who's taking notes here? I am jotting some notes down. Oh, thank you, because I am not. <laughs> okay. I'm having to block Keith's face, which means my face will get brighter because the white word doctrine. There we go. Okay. <laughs> no more Keith. It's just me and Joey. It's okay. <laughs> I'm here in spirit. I got All a right. pillow. I got a pillow of his face. Oh my gosh. Oh man. I heard about that. I that's so cool. Um, all right. Uh, my pick. Now, of course, you gotta go with. A drink spotter. Number one piece of gym equipment right there. You gotta have a drink spotter. Fuck, that was on my list too. Same. Okay. Okay, so hold on. Now well, there's two options. Is yeah. There... Which drink spotter, sir? Okay, well Is it broad enough to be both? Oh I no, it is because broad... my list has drink spotter, other drink spotter, because some of us have mm-hmm. two in our gym. Mm. I think with the challenge in mind, keeping it broad is make it the easiest for people to play the game. So yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. And we only got like an hour to do this. So that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I'll go, I guess, just a barbell then. I wasn't going to say specifically a power bar, but a barbell. For no, no, no. Do, do specific, yeah. do specific bars. Yeah. So a power yeah, I think you do bar. power bar. Okay. Power, power bar. bar. Okay. Yeah. Like a stiff bar. Yeah, stiff bar's fine. And then since the snake draft, I get to go again, right? 
Sure. That's correct. Uh, power rack. Like, are we not counting power racks? Like, I mean, because well, we want yeah, what kind of rack? You got a stand, you got a rack, you got a uh, lift, you got a, for, well, if we're, but if the whole thing is to have people do it themselves, like three people will be able to do this if we go super obscure, you know what I mean? So I have four posts squat rack, but I don't care if it's a, it could be anything that has Jacobs right. and an right. so random well, rack. Yes. Yeah, so it's just random rack. I think counts just to keep this again under an hour. Well, I think too, Keith, it's, they can pick any one of us to mimic our four. You would just, True. if you picked monolift, you'd just be making it to where only no one person yeah, would yeah, do yeah, yeah. your, your list. <laughs> like <laughs> Matt, Matt scans, like <laughs> sweet. I have it. This is my <laughs> probably bonus points, but so like a four post standard rack, that kind of thing. Sure. I don't matter. Okay. Just power rack. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I'm up here. And so, uh, with Dodds, very fitting. You wore his shirt. I got to go with Yoke, the ultimate piece of equipment. A Yoke, love that thing. I can promise you, I'm 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 touching his Yoke when I go there. Gosh, <laughs> get rid of your racks. That's that you want a Yoke. It's yeah. it's great. All right, that wasn't in my list. Um, all right, chalk. I'm putting chalk on the list. If you're a strongman or a powerlifter, don't have chalk in your gym. I think that might be I'm a wrong choice. I'm imagining now someone just, you know, strongman style covered head to toe in chalk for their video. I'm giving out ideas now. Just like looking like powder. Yes. Like just the powder movie, go. and they're just. <laughs> that's fine. That's also fine. every move, and there's their floor is covered. It's just a mess. <laughs> I told you, right. Keith, I was going to take this very, very seriously. Then I'll <laughs> my own. Who's next? I went, yeah, so uh, it went Joey, Hogan, Keith, and then Keith, Hogan, Joey. So who's next? Joey. Oh, I get to go again? That's the snake draft. But I've only gone twice. Um, yeah, fuck yeah, buddy. Now I get to go twice because I was first. Snake yep. draft goes up and down the snake. Gotcha. Uh, deadlift bar. Mm. Like actual, like like thin, whippy, whippy deadlift bar. Cool. Yep. Yeah, you've had the the Texas for a little bit now, right? Oh yeah. Oh yes, I love that thing. It's so. They, I love they, lifting they, on that thing, and it hurts so. It hurts so good. <laughs> right, like it, like you. you I don't like it for volume work. So anything over four reps, I actually don't like using it. So I'll strap up just to make sure I don't have hamburgers for hands. But yeah, that thing is a cheese grater. It's in your hands. You're, and it does make things a little easier. It does make things a little nicer. But I come up and I go, hey, buddy, look at my hands. And my son goes, daddy, that's gross. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like my hands are just bleeding and in a good way, in a good way. When when you pull, because I know you're a conventional guy, mm-hmm. um, is your stance with your legs like a Brian Shaw wide, where it's you're scraping still, or are you within the smooth on, on the bar? Do you do you scrape on the knurling when you deadlift? No, no, get... no. The bar doesn't touch me at all until it's on my okay. thighs, and okay. I I actually think there's something wrong with me for that. I actually sometimes wonder if I'm if I'm losing gains for that. Because all the gains are lost. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, again, cause I hear people, they're just like, Oh, it's right up there and it's on my knees. And, I, and I'm just like, not for me. And I'm still doing decent weight for my body weight. So I just sometimes wonder if I'm deadlifting wrong. Yeah. I used to pull with that super wide strongman stance and I would scrape the heck out of my shins on it. And yeah. I got a form change and now it's, I drag, but it's the smooth. So it doesn't matter. No, I definitely don't drag. And I definitely am. Pretty close stance. Okay. I did 370 for a couple reps on my last video. It beltless. And now I just like I said, sometimes like, do I even need the belt? Like, do I? And that hurts because I love my belt. But is it really necessary anymore? Wait till you get a belt fed belt. Then you yeah. can get back into it. I've got one of those belts and mm-hmm. uh <laughs> All right, so that makes you Hogan our next, right? 
Yes. Okay. So similar to your natural stones, and I raise you sandbags. That was on mine. That was on my list. Of course it was. Now, pea gravel or sand? <laughs> uh, sand. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, I have some, you can see them. They're sloppy filled and I hate them. <laughs> I hate these things and they're on my list, but mine are bad. I've used some tightly packed ones and man, that's a game changer. They're so much better. Uh, I shared a story today from the company that makes the sandbag, the one sandbag I have. Uh, she's here. She's a Canadian company. And she was like, no, you pea gravel is less dust, less wear on your bag. Like okay. she was the one that told me that I should use pea gravel. I have lifted. I actually do have sandbags. I've never shared them before. I have two red sandbags with multiple handles for throws and tosses and carries. Um, but I, I've never really shared them on Instagram or anything, but my really heavy ones are pea gravel. Absolutely. Pea gravel. What's your heaviest bag? 150. I threw it on the, I God, I can't even get it on a scale, but it, I think it's actually a 148. My bad. All right. My turn. So yeah, you'll be doing your next and your last. Okay. Shit. Okay, that's actually easy. So, is perfect. that four? That'll be four. Yeah, no, that works. Out no, right. I've only had three. But then you, we will come back for the end of it. And yeah. then oh, go, okay. So this is his finish. last. Yeah. Yes. No, Got it. Okay. Gonna, okay. So he's going to put me in the win. Um, so I'm going to go. This is one that I wouldn't have had on my list six months ago, but it's something I fucking can't hit a heavy lift without anymore. So ammonia. Fuck. Of of like any, I mean, I, I'm not going to be specific. I was I mean, on mine. It does not have to be obsidian coat unpaid. It can be any ammonia of any type of cat piss smell. But uh, yeah, ammonia for sure. And my last one will be a iron weight plate, iron Olympic weight plate to fit on your power bar in your squat rack. Very nice. Yeah, I had ammonia on mine too because I was also doing the fuck around with accessories game. <laughs> I kind of had to like change my whole list mid game when I kind of like registered how when you clued in how how unserious i was well i can't i need to i want to actually have something (laughs) people could do like i can't have like i had like other we'll talk about in our 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 things that didn't make the cut but uh yeah no we're good that's mine yeah so uh i man i'm playing like a live pick on this last one uh i have one i will talk about the things that are making the cut so i'll i'll go with this one um resistance band Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I, you, I use them for everything. I use them for so many different things and they're just so easy and so much better than chains. I had the chains first, hate them. They're decoration. That's what mm-hmm. those are. That's true. Actually, I have chains and resistance bands. I barely touch those chains. Good call. All right. I guess I'm last. Oh, fuck me. I got a couple of them here. Uh, you know, I think the one thing I probably wouldn't go without Wrist wraps. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like those are the the thing I keep saying I'm never going to need. And they are the, now that I'm doubting whether I need a belt, my knee sleeves, I don't use that like during warm ups only for heavy. I, I think wrist wraps are the one thing that like I, they make me feel very comfortable. That replaces, I was going to say barbell rescue code paid, mm-hmm. code unpaid. It is on my list because, you know. Same. I am. I'm down, but yeah, definitely wrist wraps, and I won't go brand specific or anything like that. But yeah, I don't think See, I can bench without them. I'm the. Ex- I've never used them. I've never gotten into them, really? and I'm the exact. I. I don't. I'm. I mean, I've tried them. I just didn't like them. It was so much work, and they felt weird. Really, like you're. I feel like you'd be able to put ten pounds on your overhead press immediately if you put wrist straps on. But I don't know. People say that, but. It's crazy. Well, I, I do the the split jerk when I do, and so I, maybe that would help. I don't, I don't know. I can't imagine benching above two plates without wrist straps anymore. Like that's just fuck that noise. Ugh. It hurts my hands to think about. <laughs> All right. Well, do we want to do a recap? So uh, I think we should do a recap, and then we should do a bonus. What was the one thing you wanted to say but didn't? Yeah. Because I just, yeah, I did mine with the barbell rescue, but that was more of a plug. Because mm-hmm. I am a whore. <laughs> Code unpaid.
Okay. Oh, here. Date. All right. So go everybody, with the everybody. I put it in the chat, and so everybody can read theirs. So it's like a clean cut. Honestly. So mine was, um, I got wrist wraps, a deadlift bar, chalk, and natural stone. I don't sound like a power lifter in any of those mm-hmm. at all. Like now that I'm reading back on that, God damn it. Is this right. a personality test? Is this, uh, is this, this is, how yeah, we... this is, a, it's a, it's a, yeah, definitely is. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. All strong, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me, my dear. Gonna do that. <laughs> Very good. I, I can't wait to see how people can finagle all that together. So my <laughs> yeah. mine, my listing here was a a drink spotter, a yoke, a sandbag, and resistance band. Nice. I got power bar, power rack, weight plates, iron weight plates, and ammonia. I'll say Keith's is the most doable, yeah. but the hardest to really kind of stand out there's like a yeah. balance to that you're gonna have to someone's got and, to really get creative and like i've got i've got a i've got a lot of neoprene weight plates in my house so oh that's a good point you could go bump yeah i no, got bumper you... i've got neoprene i've i've got like a couple sets of but none of iron so, plates but you can't do any of that like no, you, the, yeah, the, 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 let's let's clarify some of the ruling. Like you can't do anything other than like a pair of collars and a pair of safeties, basically outside of what was on the list. So like, oh, like like Joey can't Joey's people can't do anything in a rack or with a bench or with plates of any capacity, right? Lift those fucking rocks, boys, girls. Yeah, yeah, basically. And yeah, them, unless for some them, reason they're fucking shit. needing spotter arms for I don't know what. However, safety. Whatever they is safe. To put yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Safe. yeah, yeah. We don't even get hurt, but I'm just like. That's why I had to kind of like pick mine to be like, all right, because if because if someone else had gone with like weight plate, I would have had to like throw in bumper so I could like steal plates. I would have had to like put a caveat in. I can't wait to see somebody deadlift some natural stones. Watch it happen. That because Denny counts. Denny counts. They're like, I'm just saying, like if they see my brain went to they took pea gravel and like taped it to the bars. (laughs) Well, no, because I I didn't have sandbag. You did. No, no, what they would have to do is they'd have to put natural literal. If they put natural stones at the end of their deadlift bar and chalk up, they're technically doing my challenge. Yeah. But if like they could get like a some kind of like big some apparatus that goes around the bar that holds some stones of some store because stones could be as simple as fucking gravel, I think. Doesn't That's what I'm like, saying. When is it a stone and when is it a pebble? <laughs> When it's in a bag, it's in a bag. It's a sandbag. That's not a. That's not that sandbag. Yeah, I think you could you could like kind of just like scotch tape a rock to the end of the deadlift bar and do. That's where my mind went from the floor, and you're good. That that counts. But we can't tell people what to do. Uh, I just want to throw some ideas out there, just to kind of spark the creative juice. The three of us, do we have to replicate our own as well? I'm assuming in a video. I think that would be something we have to kind of challenge ourselves to do. Please do thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah. challenge by choice please yeah. don't or we uh, so what did so, i sign up for <laughs> so just like as a side like what was the one in your list that you really wanted to say like what's your favorite thing that you wanted to say but you didn't get to for me currently axel but i know people mm-hmm. how many people have so 100 people might do this 50 people might do this like 10 of them have an axel so I yep. had to go with something more broad, but Axel has been my new favorite toy as of the last couple months. I know you've been smashing. I mean, you talk about not being able to get 200 on Axel and you're already doing it. So <laughs> just, just I mean, shy. Was- yeah. Uh, my pick again, I got logistic with it. Um, it's I, I mean, it was almost at the top of my list. Mars bar. I love the Mars bar so much. I'm a low bar squatter. It just gets so comfortable. It's a home gym. You can do so much volume with it. And it's not really a big pain on your back or your elbows or anything. I love that thing. That's you, also low bar, you also low bar squat without wrist straps. That hurts my wrists as well. Fuck. There's so many things I wear wrist straps for. That <laughs> like, But I'm also 15 years older than you. So that's probably part of it. Oh, God. Um, I definitely, I've got a few of them too. Um, you got? Oh, well, toast plays. Like, God damn it. I'm so mad about how much I love those from Barefoot Shoes. 
Oh. Those toast lays that she gave me, and she's like, "Yeah, just try these." And I was like, "No, I'm not. These are going to be stupid." And then I tried them on, and they're the greatest thing ever. Um, but I, I do think a fat bench is the one thing I would put on there that, like, I was lifting on this bodybuilder Amazon, like, adjustable bullshit bench, and I hated bench for so long. And then I went to Bells of Steel and bought this big, fat, comfortable, like, big, thick bench. And I was like, wait a minute. Bench is great. So I do think a fat bench is, uh, for people who really want to increase their bench, that's definitely worth looking at. And, and and paying attention to, um, and again, barbell rescue. I can't actually imagine how. Sh- again, like I had this like shitty toothbrush thing, I was cleaning my barbell with, and then finally got our code and bought a barbell rescue. I can't. I can't. I, I would tell everybody to buy one of those. It's genius. Yeah, so. It's definitely something that should be on your Amazon wish list at, at a minimum. Because I think, yeah, he's on Amazon. Yep. Yeah, he's on Amazon. You wouldn't be able to use our code on Amazon. Not in Canada, but, but yeah, it's still like something that I got deadlift jack on there too. Get I your deadlift too. jacks. I, yeah, I had a uh, you know bench, lap, pull down, dumbbells, buffalo bar, Cadillac bar, kettlebell, like extension, leg curl, deadlift jack, kettlebell. List. Yeah, I, I how much some. how much kettlebell yeah. do you do? I used to, I did a whole. I mean, I've done kettlebells a lot when I worked with a personal trainer, like t- like ten years ago and stuff. I think I've swung like a one twenty or something a couple of times. I was a heavy bastard, uh, but I haven't really. I don't know. I I touch a kettlebell twice a year now. I love kettlebells. I wanted to put blobs, uh, <laughs> I, but I was like, oh, here's how you guarantee no one does your list. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna get and... Rob from Vintage Weights who does not listen to this. <laughs> and then, like it's Tanner, and Keith, and Rob. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for clarity too, I'm sure we talked. We already said it in one of my head. Like they have to pick one of us and only do that. They can't submit three times. It's yes. pick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No dr- uh, No. No druthers. No druthers. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy counts. So if you're having some fun doing it, that'd be great too. That's kind of my vision. Is that you know it's. There's a lot of points for creativity. So I'm going to throw down a challenge for Tommy and Tanner. You are not eligible to win, but I do want to see both of you submit a video, please. Uh, Whoa. I, know Tanner, I know Tanner will hear, hear, hear this and probably, uh, you know, partake. I uh, hope to mention it to Tommy. <laughs> but that'd be cool to see them, uh, you know, throw some stuff on their personal IGs. If they want to participate, we would love that. Oh, why can't they win? Well, just. It's like rigged, man. I don't know. Well, they they can you can participate. We just we like what if they're the, what if they're the only people that actually participate, <laughs> and then, then we just have to decide between the two of them because <laughs> like everybody else is like these fucking idiots. I don't want to do their challenge. Well, I just I don't want to I don't want to lift on Joey's wrist wraps, deadlift bar, chalk, and natural stones. And they're like, nah, screw that hippie. Well, we did say they had to be a supporting member to win. And last time I was checking on the gear, we're paying the $3 a month. So, you know, <laughs> they're the uh, founding fathers. But, I don't but they don't have to use they, they don't have to use all four of our things. Right. Uh, I think you have to at least be in the video. Like, I, okay. I would. So that's the thing, too. Like, can you like just have the deadlift bar sitting on the floor and then just pick up a natural stone with chalk and wrist straps and call it a day? Like, I don't know. Let's let Hogan has to decide that. Yeah. I would say it needs to be included in some manner. And if you're doing strongman style, making like a some kind of event out of it, uh, I think that's permissible. But it's it's got to be like an exercise. And so there's creativity there, but you got to be touching each thing. Knowing, including it. you got to touch each thing. Knowing how little I know about strongman, what's a medley? <laughs> you, you do a couple things. Back to back to back. How ma- no, no. I, okay, I know what a medley is. Thanks, Keith. But like, how many is like the maximum? How many is the maximum? Oh, three or four? I don't think. Well, I've seen. I've seen four. There were four at the amateur. The okay, uh, so maximum four clips. So if you want to take each one of our lifts and do one of them each time. It better be fucking amazing, but if you can somehow incorporate all four into one or two videos, we'll take that into account too. No, I think yeah, I think that's super all. 
Yeah, it's it, one video. It's and supersedes all its creativity. And one you can, video. You can edit the reel to where they cut into one another. Yeah, I'm gonna whatever. say like, yeah, like I don't want to, I don't want anybody deadlifting natural stones on the deadlift bar. That's fucking wild. Well, like, that's your fault for picking that. <laughs> you knew the game. All right. Well, that's a no, creativity because if it's because it, I think I feel that if it's you can do all four videos and someone could just like sit there and like sniff ammonia and that's a video. Like I don't know, that's. That's, a yeah, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I love all the sausage talk about this. <laughs> Everything's fine, Keith. Everything will be yeah, fine. Just uh, Hogan will put it all in text for us and we'll make a post and go to that. We'll, we'll, we'll put fine details to be determined when you're listening to this, but go check Instagram out. It'll be uh, the rules will be there. Yeah. If, 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 Hogan, if Hogan types them up and sends us to us and we can post them. <laughs> Otherwise, them none of this is happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, might just, I might just give him the login and let him do it because I'm busy, <laughs> as, as we like to say. <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah, we're super serious geese about this competition. If you're if you're even a f- fraction against the rules, you're you're not winning. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say have a good time. Partic- have fun. Yeah. Every participant will get a, a sticker pack. But you have to come get it at the Lift Hard Lift Easy because I'm not mailing. Okay, it yeah. Of those okay, out. good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Fuck that because I'm showing up with some new sticker to packs at some point. <laughs> um, and yeah, like have fun. Don't hurt yourself. And like, don't listen to us that much. If you just want to just fuck around and lift with, if you want to do a shot of ammonia in a deadlift bar and a blend and a blend, like just do it. Just we'll figure it out as we go. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be that strict about. One video, one watch, 30 seconds. I'm not going to be that strict. And I'll probably spend more time doing it because Keith is busy. <laughs> Some, sometimes <laughs> this week. No, yeah, my parents are in town this week. And next week we got to leave for home gym con like Thursday. It'll be good stuff. Yeah, I have fuck all to do. So I'm definitely in a more privileged stance to judge this than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it. I'll just uh, put my seal of approval on the one person that picked my list. Yeah, I know. I'm so definitely going to send you and be like, this guy chose your thing. He's the one you're going to pick. Shut up. Let's show it off again. <laughs> this is what you're, you know, all the, oh, goodness. The, no, uh, if you could somehow uh, get a picture your of you in it. Oh, oh, my yeah. gosh. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we'll we'll get some better pictures, but this is yeah. what you're clamoring for. It's what, what we'll do is we'll all go out and take rascal style pictures like they did. With, uh, I saw that face. We're all going to do that. And we're all going to go just like pose in our windbreakers. Uh, hey, really, I actually I'm excited to wear it. Like, I think it'll be a nice. I actually kind of think the next Masonomics drop is a, is a rascal uh, collab. I don't know about that. That's, that's, I heard uh, uh, Tanner saying he's changing the game. It's the biggest thing. I think something's coming that like. The biggest just, handshake heard around the world might be a part of it. I just want the Crispy Boy banner to get a sneaky link for that in the Discord yeah. and just buy that because I've got like a perfect spot for it that'll like be able to phase out an old banner that I don't really want to support anymore. I have no clue what you're talking about. Can yeah, you do? If you don't have... sneaky right, links, man, you... we don't know. We don't do. God. Then the, anybody listening to this doesn't get <laughs> fine. Like fucking, fucking. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie the l- the lawyer, Nick Alvin, isn't listening to this. All right, there's not gonna be any cease and desist come from this podcast. Well then, what else I had like one little announcement uh, promo. Uh, I'm trying to coordinate at Home Gym Con. I've been holding this here. If oh anybody is dumb enough like me to get a heavy mug, please bring yours to Home Gym Con so we can do a toast. It will be a great little video and clip. Jesus. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're coming there, all 13 of us, and you were, you know, made financial decisions like I, bring your mug. That is Here, maybe the sound will register. That's, oh, my camera went with it, but. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually good on time, I think, if you wanted, if you had any, I know we talked about maybe cutting out any of your other stuff, but if you have like 10 minutes or so you wanted to, I mean, I'm cool with. Yeah, let's go. I, I've got another. I've right at time. two hours, I think. So, yeah, if we can keep it under like 245, I think would be good. Yeah, I got a few questions. I'll start with the ones I had um, for for both of you. Uh, um, you anything for so, me specifically? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I wasn't even looking at the screen. Yes. Yeah, you're good. Um, Keith. So you 
all the talk about the spreadsheets. We love the website. We have legitimately used it, the random, to be able to watch a movie because uh, they'll oh, randomly pick orange. one. They will go, the, well, yeah, the orange great. glaze. Uh, yeah, so we've used it like, glaze we don't know what to day. watch. And we'll go random. And it's like, okay, we're going to watch this one. Oh, wow, um, there's some weird shit on there, I can imagine. <laughs> Well, we've we've definitely cycled a few times. Sometimes like, we know we're not watching that. That's uh, that is one way we got to watch basketball. Um, oh. That did. <laughs> um, so, anyway, at least one of us did. With the spreadsheets, uh, my my question is: Does your wife, or do you for her, have any spreadsheets, or any couple or home spreadsheets uh, that you have? Yeah, there are. Like we have like a car maintenance one. Fuck, I can actually look. T- um i think at one point i had like a whole like house project thing uh together shit really i think what else is really it was just uh like we have some medical stuff where i have like certain dates and stuff set aside but as far as something that she's actively oh (laughs) i don't i shouldn't share this but they're hypothetically someone might have a spreadsheet with every username and password they've ever created in their entire life and have it in alphabetical order, but uh, it wouldn't be me and my wife. No, we don't have that. Okay. But yeah, that's that. It, that is a daily looked at spreadsheet. I just want to know if the, the infection had spread. Oh, she the... could give a fuck less out, outside, okay, of, okay. outside of the one I mentioned. She does not, I couldn't get her to fucking make a spreadsheet for, for life dependent on it. And she'll have like notes randomly on her phone. And I'm like, it could such easily be a document on like Google Docs, and then you can access it from every fucking device you own. And it's like I try to like harp on her, like like your resume. Why is your resume not? Why why do you only have a resume on a flash drive on a computer you don't have anymore or something? It's like it's like this shouldn't be that difficult. Just put it on Google Docs, and then it's just there forever. And then you can save it as a PDF or a Word, and then it's just just forward that in an email. It's because she was just was uh, like doing stuff with a resume recently, and I was like, it's so easy. But yeah. Gotcha. No, she, gotcha. she has she has not adopted it like I have. Well, you you pull the weight. That, that that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do enough spreadsheeting for all of Western New York. I was curious. Yeah, I was curious. Like, how would if you both have them? Does that does that like the battles collide with style and approach? No, but just just like, you. There's basically like four or five. I sh- so I have one with all my gym equipment and like a rough appraisal of it. And I'm basically if I die, like don't fucking sell my shit for ten cents a pound, like try to get at least like 75% of like the listed price because it's like fucking like she'd be, if she'd sold my gym for a couple grand, she'd be fucking eating like $20,000 that she could make out of it. So yeah, that's, that's the like joke a joke of fear of mine. of like, you know, leaving her with that gym to deal with and like, Oh God, if I die, she's stuck with all this. They're just borrowed. You don't own it. Just yours yeah. for now. Yep. 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 Um, Okay. I had one for Joey. I'm listening. Um, Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. horror movies. Okay. Rosemary's Baby is at the top. It has to be. Uh, he's the one I've watched the most and appreciated the most. Um, Paranormal Activity. For sure. Um, Insidious is up there. Absolutely. And probably the Blair Witch Project. The original Blair Witch. Yeah. Definitely going to put that right up there. Now, there's there's one I've talked about. I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast. Um, it's called uh, Bone Tomahawk. Yes, I've talked about that. How disturbing yeah, it is. Don't watch that. I watched it immediately after you said don't watch it. (laughs) What? Don't listen to me. (laughs) It was it was fine. Um, It was what? (laughs) Me and Nicole watched it. We we kept waiting for. We we know what you're talking about when the thing happened, but we were expecting the whole movie to be that scene. No, that's not the thing. Can I tell you the number one thing in that movie that bothered me? The nut. The number one thing that absolutely sits in my mind about that fucking movie and it's not the guy getting sawed in half did you see the women in the tribe oh yeah 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 okay. Steak, steaks in their eyes arms and legs cut off just brood mares mm-hmm. that absolutely sat with me 
so awfully that that movie is the re- that that's the reason I hate that movie. The dude getting cut cut in half, like yeah, that sucked. That was gross, and it was definitely graphic. But it was the thing I saw there, which I'm not going to repeat. That told me more about that tribe than them eating that dude. That I was just like, I'm uncomfortable forever now with that. That's nope, not for it. I'm again, it not for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that was the one scene in that movie, and I I think that's the first time I've said that out loud since watching that movie. That that was definitely the the thing that made that movie not good for me. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you you pick your, your, your Rushmore, yeah. <laughs> Rosemary Baby, Parallel Activity, Insidious, Blair Witch Project, the original. That's a that is a great list. The original uh, Paranormal Activity. It, it, Oh, the, yeah, the, the first yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. second one was really good, but I think it relied a little heavily on some like technology stuff. But the first one yeah. was like a string could have moved that door and scared the shit out of you. That was the movie I got home because I was I was kind of dated. I, I'm like, I must have been early in high school, um, and I went home and I was terrified, and I. <laughs> I was like, I'm tired of being scared. Exposure therapy time. Uh, <laughs> I went in our attic. I turned off all the lights and sat there till I wasn't scared anymore. And I am now not scared of horror movies. It's just I desensitized myself. I, I credit that movie with making me not f- a fearful person of movies. Yeah, gore gore doesn't, again, does not attract me. I think I think we just learned that. Gore is not the reason I watch movies. Uh, disturbing images. I don't like the hostile movies. I don't like the purge. I don't like that that kind of stuff where it's real people doing real things to real people. I don't really enjoy that. So the horror movies that are like psychological and spiritual and the shit that just is like you're unsure. I love the unsureness of things. That's definitely where my horror movies come into play. Um, there's another one that's... Uh, I don't know if I can remember the name of it. Morgan hates it. I can't watch it with her in the house. Sinister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are fucking disgusting, but like genuinely kind of scary to an extent, right? Yeah, the one that always gets me is Strangers. Strangers is just, yep. just pure old home invasion. Just yep. in the line, why us? Because you were home. Oh, it gives me chills saying it. Like that is just pure primal fear right there modern day terror but also stupid the dude has a gun points it doesn't use it and then is like surprised that they like overcome like no shoot when you're shooting like people are so anyway yeah definitely a stupid movie to an extent but also fucking terrifying because like you don't know how you'd act in that scenario you think you know how you'd act cuz everybody's everybody's the main character in their own head right we're all we're all hyper masculine scary men in our own head until shit happened right and then suddenly somebody's telling you to put your cart back and you're the coward in this scenario so... <laughs> all show no go <laughs> all show no go <laughs> I'm, getting, um, and so... I'm getting canceled from this podcast tonight <laughs> <laughs> so i had a question for both of you um I've, i was actually pretty excited for this one Never. if the two of you still had to do a podcast together but it could not be lifting or mastonomics related what would you two pick and each of you could kind of like pick on your own or you, if you see if you're online up what would you think you two could do if you had to do a different topic Probably just get on there and do a what grinds my neuroline bitch session for 45 minutes once a week or something. But I couldn't that couldn't do a three hour. At, like, that's hard because like that's such a. I don't know. That would be my yeah, that's off the cut. Like, that'd be one I'd have to almost like think about and part like more time. Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, something better comes up. I'll spit it out. But. Definitely uh, lifting motivation. Because I think both of us have a thousand reasons why we shouldn't. And we have a million reasons why we do. Uh, and traffic. I think if Keith and I decided to talk about other drivers for 
even a few seconds, it would go for hours, hours. Because I think both of us drive a lot, and both of us hate every other driver in the world except us. <laughs> is that your main character moment? <laughs> My main character moment is driving. <laughs> It kind of is like every once in a while, you're just like, you can use your signal. Tell me what you're doing, but who am I in that scenario? Right. I would love the idea of uh, the other podcast being weather and traffic. We have our morning report (laughs) right here. (laughs) Actually, we could do something of just like literally just Google, like, uh, I could just mention one American thing that he wouldn't fucking know about. And he could mention one Canadian thing that I wouldn't know about. And we just talk about Canadian versus American shit. Like, cause that seems to be a weekly that we talk about that at least once every two episodes anyway. Well, except that that doesn't really apply because then you got Americans and Canadians both going, well, I didn't know about that. Right. Because we're just so ge- like you and I are geographically yeah, like, right like us. Yeah. And then the rest of the people are on the, other side of a continent that is gigantic yeah. right it doesn't have to be like regional to me or you i mean it could just be like i don't know like as an american representation representation of like this random thing kind of but I, I don't know that's like I, i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to you if i like later on like i'm sure something will hit me in the next like month of like oh that would have been a perfect answer but <laughs> i love the I idea know. of this baking for a month this hard-hitting question it yeah, just comes to you <laughs> it will bother never. him for a bit too I'll probably want to follow up. I was supposed to follow up on Chris's uh what was one event that what is one like the uh, digital media thing you could redo or something. And I was like, I was like, oh, I think I said like playing a video game and I like I told him I'd get back to him. And I'm like, I never <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I'm pr- I'm pretty content with that answer, honestly. All right. That was good. That was fun. That was absolutely fun. I think people are gonna enjoy this one. I think that's cool that that was our first time we actually let people listen on for a little bit. I mean, we've had some like look. We never had more than what like two people watching for like twenty minutes here or there. So I think that was pretty nifty. To we had. Like, I think more importantly, I think more importantly, I've never had anybody um, that got me so excited to record as Hogan did over the past couple of weeks. Like, you know, like not to say that I'm never not excited. Like, yeah, I might have to take that back, roll that back a little bit. But like, man, I was so excited to be on here tonight. You had this like setup, you had this competition you wanted to do, like you had all of these things. And I was like, I can't fucking wait to present this to the crew. And now yes. we've got this competition we're doing. We got, we got varsity jackets. Hey, Austin Turner, mm-hmm. green shorts guy. You're not listening. We yeah, got our jackets, that. bro. <laughs> Win the That's competition. Nasty. See what happens. Right. Like there's just these things that like oh, I was so excited to hear. Uh, but very uh, importantly, uh, I think I finally came to the decision that mostly squat videos is an AI. Um, meme page. generated. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was I was on Instagram just scrolling and I was finding this dude and I was just like like me like like lifting meme motivation. And it was just fucking just AI. And I just thought how easy that is, how easy it is to just write AI, like, like take, take sitcom, put lifting motivation on it, post. And so I want to congratulate uh, Mostly Squad Videos for being an AI video page. I mean, he's done really good using uh, chat, chat GPT to write all his uh, text for him. Well, we'll see. When he finally gets on this fucking podcast. Yeah, I don't know. I'm tired of, you know, I think I'm going to take him off the uh, future crew, you know, list that I have there on that spreadsheet just because it's like I'm tired of asking him every couple of days. It's like, you're going to come on and, you know, he always bails. Bullshit. Yep. Yeah. What show is that from, man? What show is that from? So anyway, Hogan. See us out, man. Where can we find you? You can find me at. Hogan underscore Jim on Instagram. Nice. Everyone make sure to go follow him there. Uh, I'm big Keith. Uh, Keith Honey got 73. Go follow me in my orange gym, then a wine cellar. Uh, where are you at, Joey? Uh, Joey underscore Molesco. I'm at least he's at KO. Uh, also, unpaid and underrated podcast. Uh, follow us there. Keith will answer you. I probably won't on that one. 
Uh, don't forget to use our affiliate codes at Obsidian, Barbell Rescue, Plate Snacks, and Home Gym Con. It's all code unpaid on all of those. Don't forget that if you're listening to this, you probably aren't going to get in on the last ampules from Obsidian and Ammonia. They are effectively discontinued. So if you can't get them from him or his distributor, the ampules are done. They're not making them anymore. So go and get those. All right, boys. Uh, we had a couple new uh, Apple uh, podcast uh, reviews, so we appreciated that. Uh, I think I posted a couple on Instagram. So if anyone hasn't done that yet, please head over there. Uh, I don't know. As the as the sisters say, we're not sure if it does anything, but uh, you know, it's always cool to you know see some support from the crew. Uh, YouTube, you know, you can get on there and do some YouTube comments, raise your first comment on there and, you know, anything witty you want to say about the podcast, uh, that, you know, you know, that or discord, obviously. And, uh, till next time, we'll see you next Tuesday.